You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Okay, we're going to get started for the Board of Finance public hearings, Tuesday, March 15th, 2022. Uh, tonight is the second night of the public hearings. Uh, we will uh, recess after tonight and reconvene on Monday the 21st, at which time we will uh, listen to all of the department presentations. The board will, will meet with the finance office and the first selectmen as well as others and then on the 28th, we'll meet and cut the budget, and we'll recommend a uh, total budgetary recommendation to the RTM on the 28th. At that point in time, the RTM will convene its committee hearings, and we'll reconvene in May to set the mill rate and also uh, to, to complete any revenue projections that might be incorporated into the, uh, into the analysis. Uh, the total budget recommendations as presented for 127,024,327, which represents an, a request for a 5% budgetary increase. There's estimated revenues of 14,590,000, which will, when we subtracted from the budgetary recommendations, will produce a net to be raised by taxation of 112,433,000. There's an estimated grant, net grant list of 3.8 billion. That translates into a mill rate of 30.25, or eight tenths of a mill increase, or a 2.7 percent increase in the tax rate. That's estimated, and um, that will, number will be finalized at our budgetary at our budget meeting in May. So tonight we'll start off with the engineering department on page 42. Welcome, John. Thank you. How are y'all? Good. Good. Thanks. A total request of $465,339, increase of 5810 uh, Good evening. Per usual, we'll just go over the... Uh, the increases here on the operating side. Uh, regular wages and salaries up 1.3. You'll see that go up next year. Uh, we've got three contracts that are not settled this year that will likely come next fiscal year. Um, the supervisor's contract, my contract, was settled, so you see a, a slight increase there. Uh, seasonal part-time help is where we bring interns in for the summer. Uh, unfortunately, the last couple summers have been tough with everything going on, but. Uh, that increase is due to an increase in the minimum wage. Uh, longevity is a contractual, so that goes up. Uh, we got one employee that goes up to 500 this year. Uh, uniform allowance would go up uh, an additional $100 for that, that additional employee for uh, in boots, high-vis uh, equipment, um, vests, things like that. So that is the operation side. Okay, questions on the operating budget? For the engineering department. Questions from RTM members or members of the public? If not, we'll move on to the capital items. I, I believe that's on 42.4. Is that what that is, John? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's 42.4. Uh, the first one is local traffic authority or LTA projects. Um, this is an annual request. Uh, we've seen a slight decrease in the amount of projects that have been approved by the LTA. Uh, they, they approved the, this division of the, the police commissioners that um, receive requests from citizens anywhere from, you know, installing a crosswalk, additional signage. Um, most of the ones we see that would be within this capital ask are, are crosswalks or additional um, sidewalks leading to those crosswalks in different areas in town. So uh, we currently have a uh, backlog of about 65,000 projects that are currently approved by the LTA, so we're looking to get that funded uh, again this year. Uh, the Trolley Trail Bridge Scour Protection, this has been, this project's been identified in the 
the Coastal Resiliency Plan from 2016. Um, this is down in Stony Creek. If anyone's familiar, just past the, the park on the trolley trail, there's a, an old trolley bridge that crosses the river there. Um, so we're looking for engineering this year and then construction looking in the out years. Um, an estimate of about a half a million in the out years. So Splite Ponds Bridge replacement is within the Splite Ponds Park area, so to speak. It's that little bridge that almost like a one-way bridge you come over uh, as you're driving through the supply ponds. That we've identified um, as needing a replacement. It's old concrete. I couldn't tell you the year that it was installed. but um, So again, this, this year we'd be looking for the engineering for that bridge replacement. Uh, and then the out years, you know, the, that bridge is on the state's uh, list of state local bridge eligible projects. So that would be a 50-50 uh, construction funded project. Capital sidewalk improvements is uh, a new one. If you go to, it's on 42.8. Um, we do have a few projects that were identified this year, uh, kind of sparked by the, the Connecticut DOT replacing some signalization at the Route 1 Windmill Hill by um, the Pones, Old Winds, uh, Motel 6, or Motel 6? Um, but they're replacing some signalization over there. We found that a good opportunity to kind of partner with them. They're going to add some additional pedestrian signalization at that intersection based on our plans to kind of link up some additional sidewalk that's missing in that area. Um, and going to the, to the west of the bridge over the Branford River, um, coming east to where the, the state just put in some new sidewalks for part of that I-95 replacement project. So kind of link up all those areas. Uh, East Main, I'm sorry, that was the second product, the Maple Street project um, is a sizable one. It's about estimated about 365000 That Maple Street, if you've ever walked down there, I think that the pictures were kind of included in your package. Um, there's a separate email, but there's there are no handicap accessible ramps in that area. It's all just straight drop-off curbs at all the intersections. Uh, there's portions of bituminous sidewalk that we replace with concrete sidewalk to make that kind of a contiguous um, sidewalk area, um, and then the state as well is, is putting in a new signal at Maple Street and Shore Beach Road. So again, kind of working with the state on how we can coordinate things better with their signalization project, and then our needs kind of bringing sidewalks. I mean, that would that would complete the, the section all the way from Shore Beach Road all the way down past Harbor Street to the new train station, things like that. Um, and the Monowee Street project is about 175,000 is the estimate there. Again, bituminous sidewalk, no curb ramps. Um, so it's a little bit more than what you know. Public Works has about sixty-five thousand in their capital budget. So we're looking at really much larger projects that we need some engineering work. Uh, kind of complete those those sections of sidewalk there. And anything left over, obviously, there's there's plenty more capital sidewalk projects we'll be able to use that for. So um, we got supply ponds dam maintenance. We just did a pretty large project there, so that's an out year. Just looking at ahead at 15,000 for ongoing maintenance of that dam. Uh, Metal Street reconstruction phase two is construction part of that. Um, we already have the, the design engineering funded for that. Uh, we'll likely go out for an engineer this year. I'm looking for reconstruction in the next fiscal year. Uh, that's one 100% state funded lot zip grant. So that'll be coming up. Uh, and that Metal Street boardwalk, there's a project identified by others that came to my office is a boardwalk that runs along really in the marsh um, between Indian Neck Avenue and South Monterey Street. That uh, would be a pretty large project, but um, we've received permit drawings. Uh, those have gone off to DEP for, for permitting. Uh, this, the ask that we're looking for now is for structural engineering, for the piles, for the, the beams, everything that would come along with that project. Uh, to try to move that ahead and then identify funding sources for construction in the out years, uh, likely a grant through a DEP or um, some other grant program that could be available in FEMA. So uh, that is the capital that we have. Okay, questions on the capital requests? Charlie? Hey, John, would you mind going over the Meadow Street Phase 2 again? Yes, so Meadow Street Phase 2 is the construction part of that whole project. 
So we're looking, there's, the state actually owns a, a section of roadway from Indianaki Avenue to Rogers Street. And then from Rogers Street to Church Street is what we'll be looking to uh, reconstruct, understanding that you know, there's the Atlantic Wire project that may eventually happen between you know, Church and Monowice. We don't want to waste the money on that, but you know, throw good money after that. So um, as part of this project, the reason why it's so high is we're looking at the constant flooding that's happening down there just with you know, high tides and rainfall events. So we'll be looking at putting some large diameter either sewers or some detention underground uh, to be able to kind of alleviate some of that that normal flooding that we're seeing, not just hurricane flooding or FEMA flooding, so to speak. But will this work eliminate the flooding? That's our that's our hope. I mean, through design, we're, we're we'll figure out how we can accommodate the most frequent flooding. We can't stop everything, um, but you know we, we don't want to see cars getting lost down there anymore. We don't you know the the signs getting put up, the barriers getting put up for you know road closed because the road is flooded. Um, yeah, I think this this is almost a you know, it's called phase two, but a phase one of, of what we're kind of envisioning with um, you know maybe some work to the cattle crossing. Maybe you need a storm um, pump station to pump out the water against the tides, especially as you know sea level rise appears to be happening. So uh, you know we're trying to plan ahead to be a little more resilient in that area, knowing that we can't just abandon that that spot. We can't raise the road because the businesses are so low. There's a lot of residents that are low. Uh, in that area, so this would be kind of the, the phase one of the overall picture of what we'd like to do. I mean, so is there a plan to close that underground um, bridge under the railroad? There is a, a plan for that within the 2016 Coastal Resiliency Plan. Oh. Um, we're looking at how, I, I know through the, the public process of that, there wasn't a lot of appetite to just completely close that off people use that as kind of a, I guess, a historical crossing. Um, but there would be an opportunity perhaps to have a, a movable gate, floodgate, that would help with those you know, big surges from the hurricanes and the nor'easters. So. Joe, uh, I just want yes, to, just to uh, I know John didn't mention it, just, but just so it's uh, clear for those who are watching, they mentioned the, uh, the state funded. So that is the LOTSA program. We secure these dollars. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, and, and so it is a the construction is 100% funded through a state state program. So we the municipality has to, uh, does the design work, but all construction costs are 100. There's not a, a share uh, that that would, that number that you see before you in the out year is uh, all state dollars that would come fund this project. Thanks. Okay. Uh, other questions on this? We good? Questions from the public or RTM members on the capital items for engineering? Okay, thanks, John. Thank That's you. Up. Next is Public Works, page 39. Request for operating of 2657325 increase of $151,969. Welcome, Gary. Hey, thank you. So, good hit the high spots if you like. Yeah, uh, that's what I plan to do. Uh, thank you. Uh, okay, so uh, the total increase, increase between uh, personnel and not personnel. Public Works is 6.1%. Uh, uh, requesting here are the accounts that, uh, or here are the accounts that I'm requesting to increase. Uh, regular wages and salaries and overtime uh, both have increases that reflect contractual agreements. Uh, seasonal and part time, um, massive to go up on the hourly rate. Uh, in order. <laughs> I want to get the hourly rate up above minimum wage uh, to remain competitive with industry standards. Uh, uniform and clothing increases are also due to contractual agreements and the cost of the products. Um, professional development, this is uh, a new item, line item for our department. Um, this account is to cover the cost of CDL Class A driver training and licensing. Uh, 
we've needed to upgrade drivers from CDL Class B uh, to Class A to accommodate growing needs of the department. We're trailering bigger equipment and doing a lot more in-house work. So um, also, uh, as guys are asked to cover up at the transfer station, they do, in a way, require a CDL Class A. That's a requirement of the transfer station, but it was generally never a requirement for the Department of Public Works, the only required to be. But uh, now that they're in with the Teamsters, too, uh, they're in the Teamsters Union, um, it's just a, a better idea to have them all with Class A's or work them into it. And that was under the professional development? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, other purchase services. Um, once again, the cover costs of catch basin cleaning mandated by MS4 regulations, uh, which has gone up again. Uh, catch basin cleaning has gone up again. Uh, roughly $25 per basin. Uh, also, uh, increase through curb and apron repair, and uh, also an ask for a little more for the uh, hired contractors for miscellaneous emergencies. Could talk about other fuel, but um, I'll wait for questions on that. I mean, it's, sure. it is what it is. I think. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, equipment rental. Uh, the increase to this account is uh, twenty-three forward. Uh, twenty-three forty. Um, that twenty-three forty was always taken out of other purchase services in the past. Uh, that is for the uh, storage rental of the festival stage. Okay, uh, and safety supplies was an increase in that uh, to service the defib, defib device. Uh, we have one in the department ourselves, and um, also to buy some special helmets, uh, pole harnesses, chaps, vests uh, for all the storm work that we do, uh, which are required by OSHA. And also we budgeted a little extra for possible COVID needs case we have another issue with or COVID towards the fall. Okay, questions on the operating budget for mm -hmm. Public Works? Uh, Charlie? Hey, Gary, on the CDL certification, is that a state requirement or a union Federal. contract? It, it's required if, you, if you're towing more than, uh, I believe it's 10,000 pounds. That's a state okay. requirement? Yeah, federal actually. If you, oh, federal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I guess we never I, had that before. No, only f we never owned bigger equipment like that before. Okay. So, you know. How long does that take to get? Is that a test? It's a no. It's a class. It's uh, the classes go from anywhere. It depends on its hours. It's all about hours. They go, they offer a twenty-hour class to a thirty-hour class. Um, if you have no experience, it'd be probably closer to a 40 hour class, but it's all priced accordingly. I get you. Okay. Thank you. So that'll pay for four operators to get Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Like, do you have to get one? Excuse me? But do you have to get one? I have one. Oh, you have it. Okay. But I don't want to risk a grievance right. by. So once you get it, that's it. <laughs> I don't want any union problems. Yeah, he, he can. <laughs> okay, other questions on the operating? If not, we move to the uh, questions from RTM members on the operating or members of the public. If not, we move to the capital items on page 39.7. The request is 930000 Okay. Uh the capital request, the downtown center maintenance is uh, stayed the same flat. A slight increase, uh, road improvements um, and resurfacing. Uh, this increase is due to materials costs and also driven by fuel prices. Um, you know, the cost of uh, asphalt per ton last year for a road paving project was like $80.50 off the state bid, right? Uh, now it's jumped to $89.15. So it's, it's a jump. Um, sidewalk replacement, 
uh, remains flat with uh, 65,000 seawall repairs with an increase uh, due to cost of materials. Um, the apparatus fund is flat. I have two, uh, two new asks, which would be the uh, town wide line striping uh, program. Uh, it's starting as a five year program, but I would imagine it's going to stay with us for quite some time uh, to get these roads painted properly. And I'd like to go with epoxy painting. Epoxy paint only because it lasts longer, it's more visible. Uh, the life span of the epoxy paint is more like seven to ten years, as opposed to regular fine striping paint, it's only about two years, and then you really don't see it. And uh, to get things up to up to safety standards um, around these roads, uh, we should. We I feel we should do this. Um, I've got a uh, right now a plan of certain roads that can meet about the fifty thousand dollar ask per year to get these roads line striped, fog lined if needed, all parts of traffic calming, trying to keep the people you know tra uh, drivers slowed down a little bit, crosswalks, stop bars, everything. So how many miles is this? Approximately. I have a footage price right now. I mean, I have roads, um, but I, I, you know, I have linear footage prices on this. Like so, like double yellow line is like seventy cents per uh, per linear foot. Um, you know, stop bars and crosswalks are three dollars and fifty cents a square foot. Yeah. So very But um, like for the first year, just for an example, I could do. Maple, Indian Neck Avenue, Damascus, and Bourbon, soup to nuts, for close to fifty thousand. Okay. The question from Victor. Yep. Jerry, does that include bike lanes? That some of that striping? Yeah, uh, fog lines. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh well, that's, a, that's called the fog line too. I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, bike lanes. Yeah, they're not the they're, showers, they're not. But we do. There are a couple roads, I think. If if they meet the standard, we're going to add a share of. Uh, I think they had engineers here. They had a look at some roads, but this is primarily where we have to meet are really the center lines, and then there are a few roads, as Gary mentioned, that do require should really have the fog lines. Uh, okay. Thank but you. we could pay for it out of there, but that's not the intent. Okay. Questions from Charlie Evans. Hey, Gary, do you anticipate any problem getting materials? And how about the price? That's a of good question. The, a lot of the uh, materials come from way China, out, aren't they? And they're very expensive. Yeah. Um, you know, just whatever it takes to make this paint. Um, I do know that the uh, bigger companies, uh, probably since last year, they said they were doing okay, though. You know, the larger companies have stocked up on the supplies. Hey, do I have any stock? Does Bramford have a stockpile of anything? We, we, we have, I just picked up uh, a pallet, they're fighting, they come in, our, our paint comes in five gallon buckets. Um, we don't have the uh, epoxy, we have well, the latex acrylic type, that's for our own use, which comes out of our operating budget. We'll do like parking lots and smaller jobs that we call in the bigger guys to come in and do, uh, we would be calling in the bigger guys to do the epoxy. That's good for you. Yeah, but we we uh, our order just came in. We ordered it. I want to say months ago. Yeah, and we finally got it. In. Thanks. Okay. ADA. Oh. Yeah, the ADA uh, sidewalk ramps. Uh, this is also a new request. Um, I myself. For our department, we've located about 57 locations that are in need of uh, new or upgraded ADA compliant ramps. Um, there's a need for it. We should do it. There's a lot of ramps around town that are just not conforming. 
they're not at the right pitch, they don't have detectable tiles, they're, and then you, if you were wheelchair bound um, and you were trying to navigate around town in some places, uh, you may have one ramp that just about works for you, which was maybe done in the 80s, uh, to get up on a sidewalk and then you might go somewhere you come to a complete dead end where you have a six to eight inch drop off. So you have to find another way around. Okay, questions Jeff. on this, Jeff? Gary, so this is outside of what John is working on under, yeah. under his six yeah. feet. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Charlie? Hey, Gary, the ADA requirements, have they been uh, changed such that the pitch is longer or something? Because why, why are we making a steeper pitch? See, we're not making a steeper pitch. On the there's a lot of There's a lot of ramps around town that were probably done in the 80s and they were just done. And they didn't meet the well, ADA? No. Hey, the, no. They were well intentioned. I mean, I mean, yeah, they were, right. But they were just kind of basically, it looks like they were just cut out and oh. floated out and done. Okay. You know, these come with detectable tiles and everything. And the correct okay. pitch. Yeah. Just add to that, uh, this is something that I think, you know, actually was identified a couple of years ago. I think Gary actually was looking at one point increasing the sidewalk account. That was two years ago here when did that to public works. Um, and, and I just wanted to follow up because you heard the presentation as you just, just, just mentioned about the uh, locations and the, uh, the sidewalk program that uh, engineering was uh, hoping to get funded. Uh, you may also have noticed throughout town along a lot of the state roads that the state has been um, uh, constructing a number of uh, certain crosswalks the ADA compliant ramp. So it is something that is is required um, with developing a plan as, as you know, public works identified a number of locations and developed a capital plan to try to begin to address those. Engineering uh, identified certainly a, a number of uh, si areas that need a sidewalk to improve connectivity. Um, they they you know, presented those numbers tonight. I just want to, for the board, uh, to also consider if this is something we feel we may want to address in a, uh, in a manner sooner than later and really identify, uh, take a more aggressive approach in addressing these needs. This, these are uh, el ARPA eligible uh, projects that are being uh, presented tonight. So I bring that, you know, just bring that to the board's attention if there's a desire to. Get these done, or perhaps even in a more aggressive manner than, than presented through these plans. And we'll be looking at the ARPA presentations on the 21st. Yeah. 21st, yeah. Okay, thanks, Jamie. Um, Gary, you want to hit your equipment briefly? Page uh, 3915 there. That's your sinking fund, apparatus fund. The request would be for uh, well, the apparatus one uh, remains the same. Uh, there's no increase in that. Uh, looks like it's um, 225,000 up from 200. Oh, am I, am I reading that right? That's all right. I think, we did, it's, I think it's pretty self explanatory here, but um, oh, so she bumped you up by 25. Oh, right. So, um, so I think um, unless the board has questions on this, uh, you can see the, the request. They're looking for the 225000 that went the apparatus fund, and those are the anticipated expenditures in that column. Do um, I get a question? Sure, Jeff. Gary, I like the idea of the multi-message board. Where do you plan on using something like that? I've seen it in other cities. I like the, the idea of the multi-message yeah. board. Um, I see that used at other municipalities um, around the state, the United State. Yep. What's your anticipation with it, something like that? So we could use it for a lot of different functions, fireworks, festival, paving projects, uh, and right down, okay. to the jazz, right down to the Jazz Fest. If you wanted to put up, you know, the 
say the Jazz Fest. I thought that's, that's what you'd be doing. I just want to hear. Um, huh? I thought that's what you would be yeah. doing. I just want to maybe get it out to yeah. the public. Of course, it'd be for the fireworks. Yeah. Thank you. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so um, I got one other question. Sure. Not related to that. Is the downtown center revitalization going to start this year? Do you know? I know it's. I'm going to refer that to. First selectman. Engineer. Oh, the engineers. Maybe the first selectman wants to uh, touch on that one. Um, I don't anticipate it to be starting this construction season. Okay. We're still waiting for some uh, uh, final numbers, I think, an estimate, a revised estimate on the project. Um, and then they'll be doing some uh, public presentations okay. uh, with that. So uh, that, again, that's another project that uh, construction is 100% funded through uh, the lots of program that we mentioned about uh, for, We've for allocated industry. funds in the past for that. Correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that, that project is funded. You actually may uh, go uh, be, uh, uh, request some additional funds that we feel are eligible for that project uh, as well uh, to expand the scope. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. But just while I have the mic, I just want to be clear. All that work that it, it took place this past summer and the year before, that was all utility work. That was not part of the town project, uh, to be clear. So. That's good here. Soon. Is the utility work completed? Yes. Thank you. Okay, other questions from the Public Works Director, Jerry? Questions from the RTM members, or members of the public? All right, Gary, move on to docks and recreational facilities, page 48. Docks and uh, recreation is a small uh, bump up in that also. The total request at $20,442,000 up by $126. Yeah. So uh, is there questions from the board on this? Questions from RTM members? Frank, you have to come up to the podium here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Frank Tuhill, RTM First District. Just a quick question, sir. On um, right, right, I just wanted to know about the projects that have been underway for a while, like down at Brantford Point. Was that finished yet, sir? Are you talking the uh, dock at Brantford Point? Y yes, sir. Yes, that's complete. Good. Well, how about Stony Creek? Meaning, oh, Madeira Park, the seawall of Madeira Park? Yes. That's done. Okay. There's a little bit of, we're going to go back and handle some work in-house at Madeira Park. We have to excavate and not fill with concrete or flow will fill with behind the seawall. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Gary. Th thanks, for Chairman. You all set? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, Gary, thank you. Thank you. All set. Next up is police services, page 31 and 32. Welcome, Chief and Deputy Chief. Thank you. Good evening. All right. In the um, as far as the operating budget and the personnel lines the, within this budget, that does not reflect any upcoming uh, contractual wages. Our union contract that we're in negotiations right now so that that will be to de determined at a later date um, in regular wages and salaries you'll see a uh, sixty six hundred dollar decrease what that is is a, a newer officer a recruit uh, a recruit is an officer that we hire that has not gone through the police academy yet so they come in at a much lower uh, rate of pay and, and follow the steps in compliance with the union contract so that's where that decrease originates from and the only other significant um, one to highlight is in our part-time clerical support line. There's a decrease of 62 or $6,300 there. What that represents is we had four part-time clerks and we made some changes within our operation and, and gained some efficiencies. Um, so we're able to eliminate one of those clerks, but 
and when we looked at the pay scale of our current three clerks who are all quite frankly very talented and, and know some specialties in our records retention areas their salaries weren't uh, up to par as we, we see some of the labor rates increase so working with HR on that so there's some uh, room and allowance to add some slight wage increases for them but eliminate that fourth position as we go down from there there's there's really nothing to highlight uh, in the total personnel services line it's, it's basically flat and we go farther into the budget um, the non-personnel lines uh, as you see there's no movement flat there I, I think we're in good shape and we can make do with, with what we have so I did not inc put in any increases uh, in those lines setting so a good example for other departments well <laughs> let's just say this won't be every year but I thought I'd try to help out this year uh, questions uh, from the board on the operating budget questions from RTM members or Members of the public, with regards to the operating budget of police services, police department. Charlie? Can I ask you about the social worker who was assigned to your department? How is that working? Oh. I, I could kick that over to the deputy. That was he, his labor, and uh, along with Margaret Liberta and, and Pete Samino, but I'll have the deputy address that for you. All right. Uh, it's, yeah, it's been great, phenomenal program. Uh, she's been very busy. Um, actually, today is, uh, I think, National Social Workers uh, Appreciation Day, so we post it on our Facebook. So you, if you get a chance to take a look at our Facebook, you can read more about it there. But she's been involved in hundreds of cases, written hundreds of reports. She's made some very, very valuable change in our community. So uh, yeah, we're really proud of the program, and it's definitely been a success. And so it's beneficial. Absolutely. So does it relieve the officers of any duties? Uh, it does because she's been able to find long-term solutions for people that are repeat callers to the police. So, you know, we have situations where we go out and repeatedly deal with kind of the same problem, and she's been able to find long-term solutions to resolve those problems. So that's been beneficial, and it's, it's definitely cut down our call volume in some respect. I'll tell you, one of the things I remember, the police officer would have to stay at the scene until she showed up. Is that happening? So what we do is we respond to the scene first and we make sure that the scene is safe and she comes in as a second responder. So we won't send her to a scene without us to, a, to a, like a crisis call or uh, any type of emergency. We go there first, make sure everything's okay. When the scene is clear and safe for her to enter, at that point we call her she comes out when, when is there a long time lapse between no them? it's only minutes because she's right at her PD so she knows what's going on she has a radio uh, she's available to us and she can get there in minutes so it's, it's not a problem she has her own car she does thank you well, okay thank you for that update uh, other questions from the board on the police project on the operating side anyone else from the uh, RTM members if not, thank you. We'll move on to the capital items. So as far as capital goes, it's the usual um, police car request. What I've included in this budget was, was four uh, police cruisers. We realistically, five would, would be my, my mark um, to kind of replace another admin or uh, investigative services car, an unmarked car. But I think the way I'm trending, even with fuel, I'll have some room in, in this fiscal year. So my intention is to hopefully be able to transfer money to, to capture that fifth. The four is um, what I need and what we're facing, like everyone else in, in different industries, is our orders that we place like July 1, July 2nd, we place these orders most of the time. We don't even have vehicle identification numbers or production schedules on the ones from last July. So all the vendors and the dealers are telling us specifically on the upfitting of the vehicles and the equipment we put in them, the lights, the radios, the all that stuff, the lead times are getting out of control and there's been some price increases as you would imagine. So. We could find ourselves 
in a 12-month cycle where we're behind. And what that will do in the middle of our fleet, which we call our second-line cars, they're the kind of the, the they absorb when other cars are out in maintenance or out of service. We'll start seeing pretty high mileage on those cars. So it it'll be good in a way that we run the miles up on those, but if we start pulling back on our fleet allotment, we'll find ourselves in a, in a pretty tough position. So our intention is July 1, we're going to put these orders in, um, you know, in, in, in this budget, but there is there's a problem. There's obviously, we all know, the, the car and the chip market. So um, in that th four car request, just to, just to highlight, we, we, we do have one hybrid police vehicle coming in our last order. Um, the reviews from some other police departments have been okay. We're going to try that one, and I have an uh, allocation in here for another one. Uh, the difference is from our standard vehicles, about 4,000. Ford predicts, again, based on price per gallon and idle time, they're saying maybe you could see anywhere from three to $5,000 in savings in fuel per car per year. I'm not so sure that that's the case, but what they do do is they don't idle as much, which is, which is good environmentally. Um, because of all our equipment, we can't turn the cars off. So with this, it'll kick to electric mode. All our equipment stays powered. Everything else functions. So just to highlight that, we'll see what, what it brings. We'll test and evaluate it. We'll see what we think, and we can determine that uh, viability as we move forward. The other line is, again, this, the equipment setup. Um, nothing really changed there. Our portable radio replacement, that's just our normal ask for a few radios so that at the end of the life cycle, these radios were not looking for a, a significant capital expenditure. And the laser and radar speed detection and warning line, we've expanded that, I believe last year or the year before, to include some of the speed signs. Uh, there's, there's two of them right now in, in, in town that are fixed. We have upwards of, we're putting together, I believe, our fourth speed trailer. Um, our fourth speed trailer, we were able to get a used frame and body and public works were nice enough to help us retrofit those with newer signs. So we'll have four speed trailers, two of those um, speed warning devices, and we're, we're looking to buy a few more for areas that we've identified meet volume and speed issues. Um, so that's, that's the $12,000 there. The best replacement is a sinking fund. And you see the last, I, I didn't put any money in for a license plate reader. We have one functioning, and we have another one coming on board with a new vehicle. Um, and I think that's sufficient for this year. Other than that, there, there's nothing else to address. OK, questions? Question. <clears throat> Harry? Yep. Uh, on the price of the cars, do you feel comfortable with the proposed number, or are you going to be moving up? We, we normally get our, our vehicles off the state contract, yeah. and we did speak with the vendor, and he's comfortable with those. Huh. We'll see. Huh. Okay. We'll see. And how about the ones that haven't been delivered from last year? Those are locked in. Those place. are locked in. The DPOs yeah. have been issued. And, and getting all the ancillary equipment is, has been ordered, but you, you don't, still don't have that for, for the incoming already. Yeah, so the, the, the incoming ones, what we'll find is we're going to see a delay because as they install the certain components, there's a, a process they have to do, so we can't, we're going to be missing certain parts, so we're going to see a longer lead time to get those vehicles. Yeah. So even if we get them delivered, say, next month, I don't anticipate a turnaround on the outfitting for at least 90 days to 120 days. Um, but the, the pricing... For what we use, I, I, I think we're going to be okay. Um, and we do get a little leeway when we do an admin car or a detective car. There is a little bit there in vehicle setup that I can play with because those aren't as equipment intensive. <coughs> they don't get all the the, um, you know, the, the gun racks and, and some other things that we have in the mark cars. But just to also highlight that all our vehicles now uh, with the exception of, of some of those administrative vehicles, by Connecticut state law, they're going to have to have an in-car camera system in them. 
which we, we've had we've had for decades. So we're in a good good position. Um, but I, I think we'll be okay. I think we can make it. Okay, Charlie. Thank you. Do we still use any uh, bicycles? We 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 do. We we actually have um, two two bicycles that are about three years old. Um, we have a few officers that do ride them. Okay, um, so they're in use. For some of the events, we, we do. Not not as much as, as I would like in the uh, summer months because of some of the staffing demands, but yes, we, we do get them out uh, there. How about motorcycle? We have two motorcycles, yep. Okay. And they're in use too? Sometimes for, for speed enforcement in specific areas, but more ceremonial uh, okay. events. And as you know, like for the some of the parades, uh, they're they're very good in traffic control in those situations. So one last one: What is lead-free ammunition? Lead-free is exactly that. There's, oh, there's, I know, but I mean, I've, there's I've, no I've, lead in it. Certain ranges, um, you're not allowed to, to shoot ammunition that has lead in it for disposal reasons. So there's there's a little cost difference there. So what's the what replaces the lead? I'd have to look. I don't, I don't know. Some, some type of metal. Okay. Something that's hard. Beyond that. Okay. Other questions uh, on the capital items and, uh, from the board? Questions from the RTM members, members of the public? Um, so I think we're good for that. Uh, folks, um, special detail is next. On page 33, that's really your pass-through account. That's, that's just the, the pass-through account for the outside duty jobs and the construction. We've seen uh, a significant increase in in those jobs. Right. And what's our markup on it? Ah, uh, I, 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 I didn't plug. I want to say it's close to 20 percent, isn't it? 17. Yeah, somewhere. On the top of the salary, that covers the cost of the car. Mm -hmm. The amortization of the car, the depreciation of the car. Yeah, so the car account, um, we, we do, I believe we were about 170000 last year on the, on the car, generated from the car usage. Okay. Um, and then, again, that, that's a quick point to hit. When you drive through town, especially with all this construction, um, we'll have many, many officers out there, and the contractor pays for the car, they pay for the depreciation of the gas. And why we like it so much is it does enhance the construction site safety, but more in my interest also is that it's a significant force multiplier and crime deterrence. So, you know, we're, we're generating, normally in policing, we do not like to generate revenue. That's not our, right. our mission, but um, it is nice to bring in some revenue and have those, those upsides to it. So that's a separate account. Thanks, Chief. Right. Other questions? We're all set. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is emergency management, page 34. Welcome, Chief. Hello. How are you? Good evening. Good evening. So, uh, our emergency management. Budget consists of the stipend uh, for the emergency management director and the assistant emergency management director. And then um, the uh, purchase services are two software items for emergency management. One's the VOC and the other is Code Red, which is our, we're going to be using for emergency messaging town-wide. Um, the majority of it would be funded out of their EMPG grant, which is a pass-through grant from the feds through the state for the purposes we have to 50-50 match. So the grant is uh, based on population. So we get a little over $28,000 in that grant and we have to spend at least $14,000 to, you know, to get that grant. So far uh, we've, we've received um, two years of the grant um, since, since we started reapplying. Okay, Chief, questions on this operating budget request of $30,000? This one, Chief, is the, is the grant go on and on? You have to apply for it each year. And so... How many years have we had? Um, we had it, it's, it's offered annually. 
Um, we started reapplying for it. Um, we, we actually reapplied back to year 2017, federal fiscal year 17. So we just received that income in. Um, 18 is pending, 19 is pending, and um, we just submitted for fiscal 21, federal fiscal 21. Okay, other questions? Questions from RTM members or members of the public in regards to the emergency management budget? Okay, I'll set there. We'll move on to fire services, page 35 and 36. <coughs> The uh, largest increase in, in the uh, operating budget um, is the part-time wage increase, which we discussed at your February 28th meeting. Um, at that time, I mentioned that it would also include a, a request for 16 additional hours, which would include uh, Saturday and Sunday evenings. So currently, we only work uh, the part-time unit from 4 to, uh, I'm sorry, from 8 to 4, and this would bring us um, up, to, up to midnight. We do have uh, frequent calls for service during those time periods, and this would uh, help us cover those calls. That's the 107,000. That's the 107,000. Um, the next uh, would be under the overtime line item, and we incur a certain amount of overtime. The, the overtime item in our budget, um, if you look through the budget book, is um, labeled extra work and it encompasses a whole range of, of ancillary duties that firefighters do from plowing snow, plowing snow for the firehouse, we do um, air pack and, and maintenance, we do all of our apparatus repairs and maintenance, those things are funded out of that account as well as the, um, the fire inspectors and that, and that type of thing. And then it also covers the, um, when the firefighters do earn time and a half, they, um, that funds that as well. The, um, what we did this year is try to go back and, and do an 80% average of our last five years. And the only reason I did 80% average of what we've been spending is the, um, you know, we're hoping that this year, now that we're filling these vacancies, we won't have these overtime costs to the extent that we've had in the last several years due to retirements. Okay. And from there, the rest of them are flat or negative. Where where we can, we try to reduce um, and you know look at what we're actually spending year to year and the needs. And when we can, we, we try to reduce those because um, we obviously are looking for increases in some of those. We did increase some of the supply um, accounts and uh, purchase services as we're seeing inflationary increases. In those. Okay, so uh, request on the operating side of seven million forty thousand seven hundred and seventy-eight dollars, increase of one hundred forty-four thousand thirty-seven dollars. This does, this does not include any uh, negotiations. We haven't. We just started today. We just started. Our, so our first, there'll be a, be a lag in that, so there's there's no increases on the salary side at this point. Questions uh, from the board on, on the operating side? Questions from RTM members with regards to the operating budget for the fire department? Okay, so um, why don't we move on to capital, Chief? Um, 3613 is, is a uh, summary of the capital requests. The uh, highlighted fiscal year 23 includes um, these uh, requests. And then the following pages are um, supporting information and just, uh, just the um, age of the fleet, mileage, etc. So um, for the apparatus sinking funds, we're requesting 375,000 in this in this year's budget, and that will eventually replace the career engine one in hopefully 2025. Uh, similar to what the police are facing, and, and we are hearing the same thing, especially for larger custom things like the fire apparatus are taking almost two years out. And um, what I'm hearing from some of the, my fellow fire chiefs is, you know, the uh, some of the manufacturers aren't even like able to guarantee a cost. So we're, uh, we have some concerns there, but engine one by far is, is our, um, 
our busiest engine, while it's, it's one of the newer uh, apparatus in the fleet, it's already got 61,000 miles on it, runs hard every day. And it is the only career engine right now, so that's, uh, that runs hard. And after um, last apparatus replacement, we agreed that we would get back into the rotation of purchasing a new career engine and then using it for a period of time and then moving it back to replace the volunteer engines instead of buying a brand new engine for, for those. We're, we're, this is getting us back on the schedule, which we should have kind of been on all along. You're saying 24-25 for engine one? Yeah, fun. 3616 is the... Uh, Oh, 3616. Yeah, I have it listed, I think, on, I'm sorry, that's the uh, 3614, Joe. I'm not um, seeing engine one unless I'm missing. So, right, I have it uh, listed as engine seven. Oh. Because engine seven is currently the old engine one, which is moving back. So, yes, you're, I, I stand corrected. But also, it is. A, AKA. Yes, also no. <laughs> engine one. <laughs> Uh, and then engine seven will go down to replace um, one of the older units. And <clears throat> what we try to do is project out for several years. This plan actually goes on a little bit further than it fits on the page, but I try to uh, put what we anticipate at the years that we participate anticipate replacing those those apparatus. And the reason these costs are currently so high is. In that 27, 28 time frame, we're probably looking at replacing the aerial ladder, and um, it's a it's a big big cost. Okay, ambulance. Um, the ambulance fund. We're requesting uh, 200 thousand for another remount this year. Um, we are accepting delivery of a of a remount. Um, it's been delayed significantly, so that's why we have a new, you know we anticipated receiving it sometime in the uh, fall. We anticipate getting it next week. We did do a remount and um, it saved us approximately $40,000 of the cost of just the apparatus, which then when we added the stretcher and the power load unit that secures the stretcher to it, um, which is almost another $40,000, it, uh, it allows us to purchase those for what we normally would pay for a whole ambulance. Um, so the, um, the company we're currently working with right now has, has been a pleasure to work with. They've done a really great job in, in, in servicing us and in getting this uh, this uh, remount done, which as you know, for a couple of years, we lost confidence in, in this process. But um, we're back in business. Okay. The, uh, radio sinking fund is, is just that. Um, what, um, what some of the, the, most of the next equipment is, um, you know, things that we've, uh, we've identified as needs within the department and um, just because we're trying, you know, have been sensitive and always are to how much capital request we put in every year, we, um, we hope to take advantage of some of the ARPA money that's come down the pike and um, this, this request for these, this year's radio sinking fund is to fund some interoperable radios which will allow us to talk to our mutual aid neighbors. Um, North Branford's on the state um, site which is an 800 band, it's a uh, ultra high band which we um, aren't able to communicate with. All of our area departments are starting to do more and more with each other simply because of staffing issues. So for instance, we're, um, we're doing an automatic mutual aid agreement with East Haven right now. So any time there's a report of a structure fire, we're sending an engine to them, they do the same for us. And we do it for a variety of reasons. By the time you realize you have a fire, it's you're behind the, the eight ball already. So we call them on the on the get go because we know we're not getting um, as much support uh, locally as we used to get. And so um, this will allow us to communicate with those different departments. And I've budgeted to provide uh, the mutual aid apparatus with these radios as well as the officers that are on them. And um, so that's what the uh, the sinking fund request is. And then the, the balance of that fund carries over year to year to fund the major infrastructure improvements at the radio sites. Um, the one that you funded um, most recently is the site at exit 56, which was a full site, about $250,000 of, of cost for that, and it covered both police and fire. Yes, Chief. We got the uh, the other requests are the, uh, the CPR device, gear extractor, 
ambulance equipment, and sinking fund, and the sinking fund. Right. Does the board have questions with regards to that, to those? They want more detailed presentation or? Question, Jeff. Go ahead, Jeff. So with the remount on the new ambulance, I'm assuming it's going to be coming with this powered stretcher system, is that yes. what you stated? So yes, you're looking to retrofit some of the other ambulances? Some, some of the, the other system? ambulances. Some of our older equipment is, um, our, we still have one non-power lift stretcher, and, and i got to be honest with you, those, this system has, I think, reduced injury overall, which is, which is a, you know, a cost that we really can't put a number on, but um, it's much safer for us, it's much safer for the patient, and the request in this year, hoping again to capitalize on some of that ARPA money, would be to replace these older stretchers, because they are individually a stretcher's $28,000. It's a, it's a big cost for us, so. So that 75 includes the stretcher and the unit to be mounted in the car? The, uh, this, the 75 that I'm requesting will cover uh, the three stretchers, and then I have additional money for the one power load that I'm going to need. The ambulance is coming with one. So I did fund the new ambulance that's coming in right now, Jeff, with both those units. This is to cover the three additional ones that don't have the system. So it's three stretchers and three power units. No, I'm sorry, three, stre three stretchers and one power unit, but not out of the capital fund. And that'll cover all the ambulances okay. all right. with the upgraded equipment. Thank you. Okay. Other questions from the chief on the capital items? Questions from the RTM members, the general public on the capital? Fire Department capital requests. Okay, uh, Chief, would you like to hit on the uh, revenue side of the building? Yep, so um, COVID uh, interrupted a little bit of our revenue um, for a couple of reasons. We had less call volume during the COVID years, and we also had less transports during that time frame. So we can bill currently only for transporting patients. We are seeing those numbers get back in line with what we historically were. We, uh, we had our best year three years ago, um, and um, we're starting to get back to that. So I anticipate um, a better year. Um, we did 1.8 um, is the target, and I'm confident that we will do that, if not more. We'll don't have a crystal ball, but we should, we should based on the projections that are presented in the, in the budget package here from our billing company and, and our, they base those on the numbers that we give them for transports um, and our rate of advanced care, which is our highest billing. So I'm seeing that on page 3627, is that the, the recap? Yes, 3627. They're, they're they're anticipating a potential net revenue of, of over $2 million, providing we do uh, 3,600 transports and we have a, uh, our payer mix stays the same, as well as a 60% um, advanced care. Um, I would, I think that's a, a little bit um, overestimated on their part, um, but just be based on what we're, we're currently seeing. And I, I think we might be a little bit behind and January and February tend to be slow, slower for us when it comes to the actual income coming in. So um, I don't, I don't want to be over, uh, overly optimistic. And you know that if I could brag more about the ambulance revenue, I would. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, I just, I, I just based on the last couple of years, I think uh, let's see where it goes. But I think we're confident we will at least hit the 1.8, if not. So more. that's what we're including, 1.8. Actually, we have less than that. We have a million seven twenty-five. Okay. okay. All right. So questions uh, from the board on any of this uh, revenue presentation? Charlie. Tom, um, you know when I look at uh, uh, thirty-six twenty-nine, you know that's the year when uh, the your revenue went down. Yep. And I think you said it's because of COVID. But where were the people going? They weren't going to the hospital. I mean, they were um, refusing admissions? Well, you know what, I, I, I have somewhat of a theory that, well, one, 
people didn't want to go out. So people in motion tend to create issues, you know, whether it's motor vehicle crashes, slips, falls, um, just generally people weren't active as much during those years. Um, a lot of the older people who we might have transported several times before, um, unfortunately, they passed away, and you know, they COVID took out a lot of a lot of people. And, um, and there was under medical direction as well some non-transport directives coming from the hospitals for certain right. levels of calls. Um, we're starting to see those people that are willing to go back to the hospital being transported, uh, but. During the, the peak of COVID, people didn't want to go to the hospitals. They were afraid. Mm -hmm. Had a direct okay, thanks. I'm just wondering. I thought there'd be more. You'd think. But, if, you know, when the hospitals were overwhelmed and people had COVID, like Chief Bloomquist explained, they, they had a non transport protocol. We, we would give them direct contact to a hospital nurse who would check on them, and based on a you know series of presentations, praise and praise patient presentations and vital signs, we would recommend that they stay at home. It's a better place for them and, and they would be checked on and followed and if necessary we would come back and get them type of thing. That is the first time that anything ever like that has ever happened in my history. So. Okay, okay, other questions? Questions from RTA members of the board, sir? Hi, Chief Mahoney, Kevin Healy. Um, quick question for you. I saw that then basically 20% of our ambulance services are self pay, and we hope to get 50% return we, we, on investment yeah, on it. Um, our, our self pays are, um, we, we basically get about 50% of what we actually bill out, whether it's through allowables, through uh, just people's inability to pay. And, and that type of, uh, and, but we do follow a process where we will send people to collections. Um, we're sensitive to the needs. Um, they, there's a process for them to ask us for forgiveness, and we look at each situation individually. Um, but most of our, our most of our inability to collect revenue is actually through uh, Medicare and Medicaid allowables, telling us that you know even though the state's minimum is X, they're only willing to pay Y. So it, oh, from those self-pay individuals? From, that well, those are more Medicaid and Medicare. But self-pay, they're on the hook to pay, and we try to get them to pay. Sure, sure, with a sense of compassion and everything. But I'm seeing that it's, you had, I think, listed like 760 out of, 720 out of your 3,600 calls were self-pay. Yeah. And if you're getting half of that, then you're getting 360, possibly, hopefully, paying at $1,200 a piece. So that's like 350000 annually mm -hmm. that we're not collecting in revenues. So that's basically what I was looking to hear as far as what collection agency we're using. Yeah, we, we and, just, and there obviously has to be compassion given towards different individuals, but you know, 350000 that's uh, close to your sinking fund on uh, you know, a fire truck there. It, it is a lot of money, and then believe me, if I could get it, I would. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All set? Okay, other questions? All righty, uh, I think you're all set. Thanks. All right, thank Thanks you very much. Thanks. Next up is animal control, page 67 and 68. Total expenditure request of 441,935. Welcome, Laura. Everybody. Good deal. So um, I'll go over the highlights, but before I do, I just wanted to say that um, we have used the social worker through the police department as well. Most of us, um, most of the people in town who know us, know us for a lot of the light and fluffy things we do, but we do deal with animal cruelty cases and other situations that are going on, and we're grateful Danielle's there. Um, she's been very helpful to us following through on situations that we couldn't necessarily follow through on with the people before. So um, it's been very helpful for us, too. Good to know. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. Um, and if I could give you a little update on the building before I go through. Sure. So it's coming along nicely. We're um, hoping to be back in there probably in mid-August or so. Um, the construction manager has been extremely communicative throughout the entire process. 
we've been very happy with um, what they've done, and um, we're grateful to all of you for supporting this and um, being there from the beginning. And I want you to know that it's not only impacted our community, but we've had other municipalities reach out to us to say, you know, how did you guys do this with donations and community support the way you guys have? So it's 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 a big deal in the animal world. And so you know, thank you all for starting the process. Sure. So I can go over the highlights of. Um, what's going on, the Brantford Warden fees, which is our donations, basically, when we adopt out animals. We're anticipating adopting out more, and you know we've been more conservative on it just because we are in a temporary location, and once we get back to our new building, we're hoping to have lots more adoptions, but it's been, um, it's been a little weird being in a temporary location as we've been. Um, the North Brantford contribution I've gotten from Jim Finch, so um, that number came from him. <laughs> 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 okay, that's fine. So, um, and then our summer camp fees, we're hoping to get somewhat back to normal with our summer camp, so that will increase as well this year. Um, program fees, you'll see, is um, more about offering new programs when we get back to the new building, which I'll talk about a little bit in a minute. Um, and donations are coming in pretty regularly um, since we've had so much um, publicity about what's been going on. That's where we are on the revenue side. The revenue side, okay. Um, as far as regular wages and salaries, that goes into where I was just talking about the program fees. Um, we're looking to bring Dawn on full time, who has been with us since 2009. I did do a little write up for you on page 68.2. What is it? 68.2. Okay, so it's, there you go. Um, Dawn's been with us since 2009. She's been our animal camp manager as well as helping to start other programs. Um, we did eliminate a part-time position and took away some part-time hours in anticipation of her coming on the board. Um, so we lowered that line item under seasonal and part-time help. Dawn is looking at doing new programs in the new building as well um, at our community education and training room. And so that position will allow her to be able to do all of that stuff. Dawn is also going for um, to become licensed as a wildlife rehabilitator, which will also allow her to provide programs at a fee um, in that new, new room. Um, beyond that, the longevity pay somehow last year, I dropped that number. And I don't know, it was just a mistake on my part. It's always been there. But somehow, I must have dropped the number last year. And the only other change in this side is credit card processing fees. And that was really because of the capital campaign. That's where that number came from. I don't anticipate that number to be that high or really that there um, next year because we're not going to be utilizing that program as regularly as we were before. Um, and beyond that, we are um, looking at other supplies and increase mostly because everything we're ordering has increased in cost, and also just so we have um, some other things that we're going to need at the building. Okay. Questions on the uh, operating budget here? From the board? <clears throat> we'll request the 441935 Questions from our TM members, members of the public? Okay, I think we're good, and um, you have no capital requests? I do not. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> You've got your hands full. All right. Uh, you're all set. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Municipal Government Buildings, page 27. Joe? Hi. We've licensed 957 dogs, you can ask. Okay, yeah. 957, thanks. I should have thrown that in. Thank you. <laughs> We're short about nine dogs as compared to this time last year. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Brian, welcome. Good evening. Page um, 27, come on. Um, red, uh, regular wages and salaries and overtime, you're going to see an increase of 4.4% and 7.2%. That is due to our contract being finally finalized, and that represents the increase for that two line items. Uh, utilities, gas, and water, uh, the rising cost of utilities, that reflects the 19.9% uh, increase in that line item. 
and purchase services, repairs and maintenance, with the increased cost of labor rates and materials, that represents a 2.8% increase in my budget. Okay, uh, total request is a million one fifteen eight thirty million one fifteen three eighty one for the operating increase of eighty six thousand five ninety seven. Uh, questions from the operating side? The board. Questions from RTM members, members of the public. Uh, Frank's got a question. If you step up to the podium, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is Frank Tuhill again. Just a question. I looked at the the you know the, the range of pay on page 70. 70. Um, hold on. Yeah, it, it's right at the bottom of page 77 at the back of the book, and I mean I just don't understand. I mean. How come there's a raise here of 6,360, which equals about 9%? And then there's another one up there, too, that's the same amount, almost. Thank you. Thanks, Frank, for the question. Maybe, uh, Margaret, can you answer that question? Margaret or Brian? There was a yeah, contract was, okay. settlement oh, to the Public okay. Works Center, yeah. which these are GGB employees, the tradesmen and the tradesmen are a member of. So that's a cumulative of over three years. Three years, okay. There. Thank you, sir. So showing public public works union for those two positions, whereas the others have rec a rec union, and that's not that's being negotiated now. Yes, that's to be negotiated. Oh yeah, the, uh, so the that's, custodians. So, yes. So that's why there's no increases there, Frank. Yeah, you're right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I understand that. So I mean, if you see the nine percent, that's over three years. So it's about three percent per year. Is that correct, sir? Fourth year. Yeah. Yeah, so it's four it's years. It's four sorry, years that yeah, equals the 9%. Two, two, okay. Um, two, yeah. All right. Yeah. And, and, Thank you. And Frank, just, just, so, just so you know, because this is probably going to be a reoccurring theme, is that uh, the uh, transfers that the RTM approved uh, at their last meeting are not reflected here. So, so okay. this budget only reflects uh, transfers approved by the RTM in February. Okay. So you're going to see some differences. So as an example, last night, Joe was talking about in the budget the current year showed 716,000 for a contingency, but it was down to 505 because action by the Board of Finance it wasn't reflected until uh, after the RTM approves it. So right. we get RTM minutes and then we make some of these adjustments. Right. Thank you, sir. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yep. You got it. Uh, other additional questions? Okay. Uh, Ryan, is there any capital requests on this? Yes. Yes, there is. 277. 277. Any questions regarding that? 277. We're asking for 175,500. Uh, we can see the, the list of items there: vehicle, power wash, and painting of the police department, energy savings projects. Volunteer Service Center. What's what's at the Volunteer Service Center? Uh, that MA, MUA is a makeup air unit that is from 1991 that is in need of repair. It's constantly breaking down. We have to kind of put band-aids on it to get us through. Um, this year, we definitely have to get it replaced because we're putting money into something that's river, very, very old, not very efficient. So that's why I put that in as a request this year. So how we're Okay. Um, other and other requests. Uh, we got the partial roof replacement at the Orchard House. Glycol replacement at the fire department. So so soon for glycol re re replacement. It becomes uh, well. The fire department now is what, ten years old. Um, mm -hmm. Glycol becomes very acidic between seven and ten years. Um, that's the reason why uh, they recommend replacing it. So that's why that number is in there this year. Okay, and un un interrupt all power supply for the police department? That yes. generator or that's... that's No, that's the UPS. The UPS for the computers? Yes. 
all communications at the meeting. They threw that into your budget? Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> questions on the capital items? Yeah, Victor. How many hours is the UPS good for? Oh, that's quite technical for me. Uh, it runs continuously. And I believe it's the original one. But in a power outage, it, that takes over completely. Yes, right? along with our, plugged in. our generator. So in the event of a power outage, how many hours do you get? You don't know. I can't answer that question, sir. Okay. Thanks. But the police department does have a generator yes. backup. So this was this would really yeah. be this will plug the gap between when the power the lose power and when the generator pops in. That's really what it is meant for. Great. Uh, right? Okay. Right? Yep. Right. Almost like a surge protector. Yeah. Okay, other questions on the capital items? Not I think you're all oh, I have a question in the back, ma'am. Sir? And I couldn't see it. That's Peter. 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 Okay. Hi, Joe. I just like I haven't gone through everything, but hopefully you've looked at your prior year um, capital appropriations and been going over them with the Board of Finance because I noticed in here there's things like garage door repair and I think we've appropriated money for that in the past and I know as the Board of Finance knows we've appropriated money for a complete police station overhaul so let's hopefully we're, we're meshing everything together here and not doing things piecemeal. Thank you. Okay, thanks for the comments. Um, other comments or questions? You know, just to follow up on the <coughs> comments regarding the, the PD, I think it was last year there were a number of uh, uh, projects uh, that were identified at the police department that were essentially uh, bundled together. Well, our approach was let's bundle this together as one project since that time. Uh, we have engaged a, an architect, uh, Brian Holmes, uh, Jakonski and Holmes. He has been working with uh, the uh, uh, chief, uh, deputy chief, as well as uh, uh, other staff within the PD um, to identify uh, the operational needs of the department. The focus is really on the lower level of the department to really address some issues that were identified and which were previously funded through this process. Um, I just want to, uh, the, we're waiting for a full proposal he has a, uh, from the architect and we also plan on um, bringing on a construction manager in the near future to uh, work along uh, with the, the design team. Uh, so we're, as we're going through it, we're considering such things as phasing, logistics, costs. Uh, but the focus really is primarily on the lower level addressing. You may recall we had, had a request to address uh, the cell blocks, the plumbing in the, uh, the bathrooms in the cell block, locker rooms, moisture mitigation, and that's all really limited on the lower level. There are some minor improvements we are going to make on the, uh, uh, to the second, on the you know, ground floor, or the upper floor, but uh, they're very minimal uh, in comparison to the over scope of the project. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Okay. We're all set. Thank you, Brian. Next is solid waste management and recycling, page 41. Solid Waste Management Commission would request a total of three million five hundred ninety-three thousand seven hundred and nineteen or seven hundred and ten, depending on which version we're looking at, paper or electronic. Okay. Um, which is an increase of eighty-three thousand three hundred thirty-six dollars, or two point four percent. 
commission built the budget with the help of the first selectman, who's been filling in at town hall, providing information to the commissioners and the commission on a regular basis. Thank you for your help. Um, the increase is modest. We continue to plan on 13,500 tons of trash uh, to be handled in terms of collection, delivery, and processing, or conversion to energy. And 2, 000, approximately 2,000 tons of recycling, uh, again, to be collected at the curbside, delivered to the processing facility, and then processed. Yeah. So uh, if I may just quickly go over, uh, the, so in uh, salaries and wages, the increase, and there's a couple years of uh, adjustments within those uh, contracts, with the contracts elements. These uh, employees, this transfer station attendants are also a member of the Public Works Union, which is uh, uh, the Teamsters Union that we discussed. Um, so over time as well reflects those wage adjustments. Um, so those are the changes changes in the personnel uh, line items. Moving down below, uh, the uh, consulting services of $56,000, is that was funded last year. Um, that was for a study that evaluated really our full process from everything from curbside collection um, to uh, uh, the handling to the uh, delivery and uh, the facilities we're bringing out, we're awaiting. Uh, to review the final report at an upcoming meeting. Um, and from that uh, re study, we uh, uh, expect to, the commission will uh, make some recommendations on uh, where we should go as a town and uh, probably will form our, uh, our RFP that we put out looking at identifying services. With that said, when you go down to material handling um, and uh, collection, um, you see the uh, two increases of 24,309 and 22,44,40, uh, respectively. Um, those are uh, primarily the current contracts that are still in place. I will just inform the board there are um, a couple contracts uh, due to, uh, related to transportation, transportation from our uh, transfer station to the disposal facility. Uh, for municipal solid waste as well as um, a bulky waste disposal. Um, those contracts are expired. Um, we uh, have discussed within the commission perhaps uh, approaching, rather than going out to bid at this time, approaching the current uh, contractor who's uh, uh, and see if there we can get an extension. So therefore we align our transportation contracts with our collection contracts. This year, we, uh, although we're still waiting for a final uh, uh, report and discussion and recommendations, but we, uh, we do have another year left uh, on our curbside collection um, at the curb. We probably will go to, rather than a straight bid, an RFP process where we will uh, entertain proposals rather than putting down a very narrowly defined um, uh, scope and service and, uh, and see what comes back and evaluate it at that time. We're, we're working on a, a you know, front end to back end evaluation of the comprehensive program for the town. Um, we did commission a study. We're analyzing the results of the study, including the data that was produced, and we will come up with recommendations to be made to the RTM on uh, minor modifications. But while we're still in that process, we're fortunate that we still have one more year on our curbside collection and on our recyclable material processing that we have exercised. So it gives us, you know, 14 months to, to develop our program and then go out to the okay. And then the one uh, last increase I think uh, is the condo association rebate. Uh, that is the uh, rebate that we provide to the condominiums uh, in lieu of collecting their uh, trash. 
um, and that uh, rebate is directly tied to the cost of collection. So when you see, see the increase in collection costs, um, that will often drive the increase in the rebate. Sure. And we do have uh, a few more units that are online this year. Okay, question to the operating side, Jeff. Question, Jeff. Um, Paul, regarding the collection, it seems yes. like there's been a lot of problems this year. Yes. But I'll go into a lot of detail. Can you elaborate what's uh, is it staffing issues with the vendor? I mean, it, it is it is 100% the vendor, the contractor. Um, I would say that it's a combin. It's really a workforce availability problem um, and equipment problem. So their their equipment has been uh, substandard. Um, which is part of what drove us into the study that we're undertaking to determine whether or not it's something we should look at self-performing. Um, that's a very difficult labor pool to staff. I understand. Um, you know, you wake up very early and have a very tough job. Um, but we have found through going through this work that the, the um, perception of the Deficiencies um, are probably the perception is significantly greater than the actual numerical quantity of deficiencies that we've been recording on a spreadsheet. So we actually get 8,300 stops and pickups per week. You know, sometimes we get seven complaints that sound like 700 complaints. We do take them very seriously, and we respond to all of them and have them fixed. But um, sometimes it seems comical because where I live, I see they pick up every other house. Oh, we, yeah, we've we've heard it all. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, I, and there was a period, uh, particularly this fall and winter, which we had um, a, a number of delays with pickup or missing groups, and that was. Uh, definitely staffing sure. issues. Uh, but again, we have uh, a contract, they have an uh, obligation, and uh, we, we work to we're hold them accountable. Understood. Uh, yeah. to, we're going back to, to root cause analysis mm -hmm. to see what we can do to it. <coughs> Thank you. Good question. Okay, Jeff, I mean, Victor, you had a question? Yeah, Paul, what did you say your increase was for this budget? 83,336, give or take eight bucks. Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm looking at 27,000. Yeah. 20, yeah, 27. You got to add the 50. You got to add the 56 that was added into the budget in the current uh, year. The 56 uh, for the study. Paul, I don't think uh, you, I don't okay. think you counted uh, yeah, that ball. Yeah, okay. So the, the total increase is 27,927. Got it. Oh, I see. Okay, that solves it. Mystery. Uh, question. Other questions on the operating side? Questions from our team members or general public in regards to this budget, this all waste budget. Okay. Um, capital items? No capital items. No not capital items. Okay. So I think you're all set. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next we'll move on to conservation and environment, page 50. For any budget changes except for the clerk, uh, which is my increase. Um, the budget that we've had in the last year has actually um, met our needs um, for you know, reconservation, uh, um, rehabilitation of the, of the area in town uh, through the pollinator pathway projects, um, as well as removing some invasive species on different town properties. And really, our kind of goal is to increase the native habitat in town. There's a lot of invasive species as well as. Um, non-natives and plants that really don't have much uh, help with the native habitat as well as environment. Uh, so this is really where our focus has been. Uh, we've spent most of the majority of our budget is in the last half of the year, 
uh, in that remaining budget, really, uh, we do give a lot of plants away at um, the Earth Days and the Grantford Festivals. Uh, this year, we're going to look for the um, Earth Day as being our primary event to, uh, to do that. You know, our big project right now uh, is focusing on the Natural Resource Inventory. Uh, in the past years, we've actually been given $10,000 uh, in the reserve account uh, to support that. Um, we're still working on trying to get vendors to uh, assist with this. So essentially, uh, you know, we need a contractor to go out and uh, really put this together for us. And, um, you know, in doing our research in Guilford just completed theirs, uh, and we're looking to, uh, you know, maybe work with them for some consulting. But essentially, we're not sure if that $10,000 is enough. So we, since we don't have a number right now of what we'll need, we may have to come back for some work. Uh, we do have uh, quite a bit left at around $9,000 in our current budget. But again, that's really looking to try to go towards our, our Earth Day initiatives. So um, as we go out, um, we want to that Heather's here, so you may see her again. Um, you know, just sort of from a number standpoint, maybe maybe thirty to 35000 uh, will be the, the top uh, what we're looking for. But essentially, what it comes down to is this natural resource inventory is different per town. Um, and really, we, we want to uh, show uh, you know, what, what our town has uh, out there, what's changed. Um, and really, in order to get that scope, we do need to do some more assessment. We just haven't done that yet, but that's what we're going to take. Um, so we just want to make that aware. Okay. I think that is most of uh, what I have here. So, if there are any questions? so for now, your request is uh, the $11,712. And um, the pollinator pathway, that is, is that in Tabor? Where is it? Uh, yeah, there's there's two, two paces we actually have. Um, uh, there's one um, not on the Tabor property itself, but it's um, uh, Anderson Lookout. The, the name of the road is mistaking me. Um, and then uh, behind the Montuis. And behind the um, Grand Prairie Urban Learning Center, we've also done another space. About two, there are two spaces of about 2,000 square feet. Uh, where we reintroduced um, uh, some plants that we actually bought from Conn College. Uh, they had a native plant sale, uh, as well as um, you know, used, we bought seeds that are local to this area uh, that we had help with um, natural space and our bodies. Um, so we actually made these native mixes. And, and the goal of that is, is having these two areas where, uh, you know, as they grow, uh, you know, the seeds will spread out and these, these seeds can, um, you know, disperse and have more of that native plant, as well as, you know, potentially even having uh, people come and get the seeds and, and do it themselves. So that is really Okay, thanks. Uh, questions on the conservation and environment uh, budget? Operating budget? Questions? Questions from the general public or RTM members? Okay, you're all set. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Rec Department, page 46. Alex and I'm just going to hit the highlights um, on the operating budget. Uh, increases were um, came about through uh, contractual obligations along with um, from the administration uh, for a total of 1.3 percent, a total of $11,241 increase. And, uh, once again, we were able to uh, move forward with holding our line item and our non-personnel non uh, against our total of 11,241 with the increase of 0.9% for operating for the share. So it's the total request on the operating budget of $1,246,360, <clears throat> increase of 11,241. <coughs> Questions from Alex or Paul on the operating budget? Go. Uh, go ahead, Please, uh, Alex. Um, with regards to the WS pool and lifeguard, with the pool being closed, how are we utilizing those people, or are we not? We are. We will be moving forward. The pool opened up last Monday. The school opened it up, and we'll be. Uh, we're, we're now training lifeguards in the public. We're looking to get in there starting. Um, the 28th of this month. Um, and so prior to now, have they been working? Excuse me. Prior till now, have they been working? They we had, they had been working. We had we had drawn them to the hospice pool as okay. well as Thank you. as well as uh, the beaches when we had. We have a very okay. We're looking forward to recruiting them uh, going forward right now this year. So. Thank you. Okay. Other questions uh, from the board on the operating piece? 
Yeah. Uh, questions on the um, from the RTM members with regards to the cap for the I'm sorry for the operating budget for the rec department. Now we move on to capital. I believe it's on forty six seven. Yeah, just one uh, comment on the back. I just so I say this every year, but again, on the operating side, I just want um, you to realize that um, we've been consistent since we took over at the end of 2015, and all the budgets going forward on writing a grant. Um, so for the operating part of the budget, we've received $125,000. That's part of the grant moving forward. So that's on the operating side. I just want you to know that that's. $125,000 of our operating budget is from foot trust grant. Okay, it's not tax dollars. I, I mention that every year. And that's in the revenue side, I believe. Yes. So. Uh, moving forward in the capital, um, we have uh, capital requests totaling uh, 655000 uh, Again, I highlighted on page, uh, I'm not sure what page you have because I know it changed. We have 46.7 is the summary. 46.7, if you take a look at that. Um, and coming down through there, you'll see all the way across five years, you'll see a bunch of $20,000 requests for field renovation, basketball, tennis court renovation, fencing replacement, park street removal, pruning program, which has been consistent for the most part. We added uh, those dollars back in because it's very, you know, as we're moving forward with our field renovations and court renovations and fencing replacements and tree removals, it's. Uh, it's, it's very much needed consistently over those years, so uh, we funded that fully again this year. And also, if you go down, you'll see a couple highlights. You'll see Foot Park Playground renovation, uh, and you'll see Foot Trust for $75,000. You'll also see um, Foot Park Splash Pad for $175,000. You'll see two separate pricing for a total of three fifty. dollars but again, just to let you know, we, uh, we applied for a grant total grant of foot trust for 375 125 in operating and we also uh, received an additional two hundred fifty thousand dollars we usually for the most part receive seventy five thousand dollars for a total of two hundred thousand dollars each year uh, but this year we were able to receive a total of uh, three seventy five and two hundred fifty thousand dollars specifically for foot park seventy five thousand dollars to uh, for the balance of the sixty thousand that they we received last year for a brand new playground for the toddlers, and then also uh, $175,000 for the splash pad. You might ask, well, why didn't you fund? Why didn't you ask for the whole funding? At the time of when we went to look at, uh, I've been working very closely with surrounding communities, especially Guilford. We kind of like the splash pad that they're putting in there. We're trying to work uh, with them. Uh, we haven't engaged anybody in a contract or anything yet. We're just having, we're just talking through it. But when Guilford went out there, their project was $150,000. It grew at the end of the year to $282,000, and now it's well over $300,000 right now. It's a little bit different down there because uh, they're doing it at the beach, and they, there's a lot of renovation that's going on there. Uh, the good part of ours is uh, right in front of the restrooms down at Foot Park. If you know, there's another part of a small playground for toddlers, <coughs> about 30 by 50, and we're looking to... Uh, make that into the splash pad. Uh, I'm not a big uh, Facebook guy, but when I have to find something out, I go. Today there was an article I, I was talking to Paul before. There was 105 likes. Uh, people were really supportive uh, of it. I, we've been hearing from our, some of my board members over the last couple of years. Um, and um, the, the likes were, people are saying, oh, Foot Park, Brantford Point. We did look at all facilities throughout town. We just felt that it would work out better at Foot Park. We asked for it for Foot Park. And um, when I looked at the likes, I would say 99% of the people were, were saying that's foot, you know, that they wanted at Foot Park, so that was kind of a good sign. But, um, and one of the other things that I know that my board asked me uh, to do was look for recyclable water. Uh, but what, I'm not as concerned about the pricing at this, at this time. I'm sure I can ask them for money and our operating going forward if it's going to be a big cost. Uh, but right now, it's, I don't think it's going to be that much because it'll be open for like three months a year and they're, they're low power sprayers and all that. And so right, my early look at it, and I know from irrigation that it could be really expensive, um, we're looking at it's going to be around $1,000. And that sounds very cheap, but it's because of how the water sprays out there uh, during the day. So. 
Uh, I have to look a little bit more into that of moving forward, but I'm confident that we would be able to get the dollars from the foot trust for that part of it. Um, so that's kind of um, uh, just speaking on, you know, the splash pad. I think it's uh, uh, Clinton has one. Madison's looking into one. East Haven has one. I think it's time. I think Foot Park is a great avenue for it. Um, you know, I think it'll just add to that with a playground. It's kind of right in front of the restrooms. And uh, that's my take on that. Uh, moving forward, one of the other big items uh, you might see in there is a showmobile for $220,000. Uh, we've been, uh, give you a little history on on staging, we have, as you know, we have jazz festivals, we have many activities, especially in the last couple of years that were happening on the green. We've had Columbus Day praise, uh, praise before, we've had a borrow uh, from the, the town of North Haven has been uh, very helpful with us. Uh, we've really re researched this around uh, in New Haven. New Haven actually has five of them, uh, different type of stages, but um, if you if you know the, uh, when we have our festival and also our uh, graduation. We've used that stage. That stage was, uh, Jeff might remember, this was, it was, uh, we purchased it, purchased it through the Board of Ed ourselves in the, in the town uh, back in uh, 24 years ago for $44,000. And uh, we've definitely got our money's worth over that. We thought it was going to last us a decade, but we got it over a couple decades. But right now it's getting really uh, tough to use. And um, I'm going to turn over to Paul to make a couple comments on it. Sure. The existing stage, <coughs> excuse me, I have a call, so you know, bear with me. The existing stage uh, is in a very dangerous situation, and it has been recommended not to use the stage anymore. It's outlived its, uh, it's uh, service, and like Alex said, to replace that stage would cost $110,000. That's an estimate. Um, we also have some, some built in expenses dealing with the stage, and that's, uh, I think Gary Zelensky mentioned that, there's rental and trailer and storage for the stage, which is 2340 bucks a year. The manpower to assemble and disassemble it, you got a conservative estimate, it costs uh, between uh, Public Works and the Recreation Department about $7,000 in, uh, in payroll to put it up and take it down every year. Uh, like I say, a new stage is approximately $110,000 to rent one, which it looks like we're going to have to rent one this year because, again, the stage uh, cannot be used, is uh, more than $12,000, and that's for one weekend. Uh, some of the advantages of a showmobile is we have an awful lot of activities that we could use it on, besides the Bradford Festival and high school graduations. There's Jazz on the Green, Shakespeare on the Green, Wolfstock, the first night celebrations. We have a couple of parades every year. On occasion, we have an additional one. Uh, the fireworks, this thing can be rolled in to Parker Park as a center for the fireworks. Um, foot park activities, youth leagues. Uh, you can go to Bradford Point or Stony Creek. Uh, Fife and Joe Musters, which looks like we're going to have one here this year. It would be a, a great addition. <laughs> now, it only takes two employees to set this up in about approximately 45 minutes. So one other thing I want to touch on, uh, there could be po a possible revenue source uh, through rental to private organizations or other municipalities. I know the city of Middletown has two, and I'm waiting to get the schedule of what their rental rates are. But they are renting it out. And again, it goes with the showmobile and two of their public works. Uh, Thanks, Paul. Uh, questions on the capital request? Yeah, can I go back to the foot, front, the foot trust? I think, Alex, you mentioned we're getting 375 total. Is that, uh, let me just finish. Yeah, 375 but, for the foot trust. So we get sure, uh, yes. like 220 something for the Park itself, and, uh, and in one 250 for the 254 um, to finish the playground, All right. to make the playground hold, which was right. 175 which is 135. I'm, I'm talking about to make the playground. Hold. It was 75,000 dollars for the playground, 
and $175,000 for the splash pad this year, which makes a total of 250, and 125 makes 375 of what the foot trust gave us. Wait, did we ask for the operating funds? Yes. Oh, we did. Is there any any uh, any limit on our requests? Um, yes and no. Um, I mean, uh, we you know we just uh, last year the, a couple couple different years we've been able to uh, grab some ec extra dollars along the way, and uh, uh, they had a little bit of a changing guard, but um, I think things they had a pretty good year last year. But we were just hopeful that they were gonna. Uh, request that at the time I, I do this back in October I prepared in September October November goes out at that time you know I, I, we had thought that maybe those dollars would be enough but they, they weren't at the time if you know whether foot funds any other town uh, just for well, uh no that's wow. that's incorrect well, also a uh, Zion church in Brantford. North Brantford also is partner in it along with the Trinity Church I have a question for Paul. Certainly. Why wouldn't we rent somebody else's showmobile? Well, because probably uh, it would, economically, it probably wouldn't work. Because I really don't know what the rentals would be. And now, North Brantford is just delivered. It's just got what they're supposed to at least $211,000. So if we're going to rent it from them, uh, obviously they're not going to give it to us for nothing. So we really don't know what the, what the and it limits us a bit on how long to be used. Okay, other questions? Questions from RTM members or the general public? Ma'am? Sure. Thank you all. It's not a question, this is a comment. Um, so the West Haven Council approved uh, a selected group of people to come out to the community center in Bramford and they they came out Friday they met with Alex and they reported to their council meeting last night and I I want to tell you they were absolutely enthused at the diversity of the program the variety of the kids and the ages coming in the cleanliness of the facility um, there the council had reported to me today, they said the three representatives that came out to Bramford to look at the community center had such great things to say that it's a high benchmark um, for West Haven is going to be opening up a center and using funds. But I want to say that they, they the people came out insisted that it has to be um, to speak with or come back out to Bramford because they would accept nothing else. Uh, they've been to other community centers around the area, but I wanted to thank Alex, and the work is being noticed and appreciate it. All right, thank so, you thank very you. much for the comment. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. So you're gonna rent the stage instead of the showmobile, right? Oh, for this year. Yep. And how long will you have the access to the stage? We'll have the stage for $12,000 for one week. Just one week, okay. <clears throat> We're still trying to figure out something for the jazz on the grade because we need a much smaller stage. Got a couple of rental uh, ideas about it, but uh, nothing from that yet. And we might be able to piece together what we had left from the stage. Uh, Gary and I are we're talking about it right now, uh, so that we can, that'll give us you know it's, it's a smaller stage, it's lower to the ground, so we might be able to be successful with what we have. But we're still, okay. we're still talking you. about that. Now. Okay. Anything else? I think, I think we're all set. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next is parks and open space. Page uh, forty-seven. Looks like page sixty-one. I think is the page we'll be looking at. Richard, how are you? Good. Good evening. Good evening. I'm uh, Richard Shanahan. I'm the chair of Parks and Open Space. Um, and after coming behind everybody, I feel good about this because we're basically a full line item in comparison. Um, the revenues um, that come in, basically, like Jim Finch puts that together, that's all pre-arranged. Four in you know, open space set aside. Um, so from that, I feel we have control of the idea. In 
terms of the uh, expenditures and rest of the operating budget uh, and the, uh, the seasonal part-time health is pretty well established. Uh, Don Kaczynski, he's the uh, warden. He's a uh, part-time. He's out there you know, basically maintaining the trails, cutting down trees. And it's a pretty well standard uh, line item. Um, again, the only increase there, I believe, is just from uh, the rest of the items, the uh, purchasing uh, services, repair and maintenance, those are pretty much the same. I've left them the same. I've done a little bit of tweaking uh, where I've started to realize that more and more the demands on the uh, supply ponds and tall open space is uh, because of climate change. And there's more storms, there's more erosion, there's more wind damage, and therefore there's more repairs that have to be needed, uh, that are needed. The, uh, last year I came back for the transfer from capital into the uh, uh, repairs and maintenance. I'm going to have to do the same thing this year because, again, that's what the demand is. So I'm just tweaking that for right now going into next year. And other than that, it's just uh, capital equipment. I've added $250. You just see more demand for additional equipment for maintenance down a lot of invasives and that type of thing. So the operating request is for $63,051. Right. And uh, funded by a transfer in of $26,800, and that's really on the taxation side on page 47. And then the rest is uh, revenues as in previous years, so leases and royalties and um, some small amount of in lieu of uh, open space revenue for total expenditure is $63,051. <coughs> Any questions uh, from the board on the operating side? Questions from the RTN members or members of the public with regards to the operating budget? And um, from there, Richard, we'll talk about some of your special, these are your capital requests? Yes. 92,800, that's the total. That's included in the request, uh, Yes. Uh, the, uh, this is quite a jump from the last couple of uh, capital requests I've done. Um, two years ago, I put a request in for around $40,000 for uh, to deal with the ATM, the ATB problems uh, up in just to rub and saw and saw, putting up gates and what have you. Uh, last year was a continuation of that. And this year it's, it's more toward you know, trying to upgrade the rest of the properties. You know, the ATV problem is pretty well taken care of. So now we can start focusing on rehabbing the trails and looking at other properties besides just salt and stall and Pisgah Brook. Um, and that's where, you know, jumping around a little bit, um, I'm putting in uh, quite a bit for uh, trail repair now that ATVs are pretty much under control. Uh, they really have damaged a lot of the trails and it's going to require major uh, work to get up there to place some boardwalks and what have you. Uh, one of the biggest problems is just where they're located. They're out in the woods <laughs> trying to get people in there, trying to get somebody in there with materials and what have you. And that's where I think the bigger part of the expense comes from. Uh, I'm looking at Beacon Hill, just putting up the, the, the kiosks, redoing the parking lot. Uh, that was acquired you know, by the state and managed by the town, what, 30 some odd years ago. And minimal work has been done. The, the original sign is there. So again, it's just really trying to rehab that whole area. Um, and the quarry, again, just trying to bring in some signage and begin to spruce that up. The big items this year is at the supply ponds, um, going back to the top here. Uh, Pine Gutter Brook has been a problem for, I, I don't know how many years, going back to, to 1995 and earlier, uh, with major flooding, major erosion problems. Um, 
that's where they, at one point, they put in the sedimentation pond uh, because Pine Gutter Brook was eroding so bad, it was going right into Pisgah Brook, which was going right into the <coughs> supply ponds. Uh, so that was a major job from many, many years ago. It been working, but that was just a containment. They never did anything on the brook itself. So the problem is still there, and it's still been ongoing. So that's where I have some attachments here in terms of you know the original uh, study was done back in 1996. There was a follow-up engineering study done in uh, 2005, and basically nothing's been done. We did an engineering study. Everybody said that's great, but nobody really knew how to handle it. Uh, the nature of the job, and you can look at some of the photographs that attach. Uh, you, you, unless you end up really bushwhacking your way through, you don't see the damage. Uh, this past year, after Hurricane Ida came through, uh, the sedimentation pond, uh, a fresh deposit of over two feet was placed. That's how much sediment is coming down here. Um, so I'm asking for $30,000. This is a, a guess. Um, I've had a couple of foresters and uh, tree guys coming out to try to figure out what can we do there. The simplest is just to drop some trees across the brook to act as you know, natural dams, if you will. Uh, it's easier said than done. Uh, again, trying to get in there, uh, trying to maneuver these logs or trees. Uh, Nobody really knows how to deal with it. Um, that was one of the solutions they offered back in the 2005 um, engineering study. So this is just a first start. Um, I'm asking for $30,000. Uh, I was going to work with John Wachowski. Uh, he was one of the only foresters who would come and walk the whole area with me, where we're going to try to see how far we get. Uh, and probably break that up to like $10,000 allotments just to see, you know, what the costs are. Back in 2005, to look at the entire Pisgah Brook, they were estimating, you know, over a couple hundred thousand. So, you know, that's the, nature, that's the full scope of this job. So the 30000 is just to get an idea of what, what that's going to buy us. The second part is the bridge, um, the bridge over uh, Pine Gutter Brook. Uh, it was an old Boy Scout bridge. Uh, it's been there, I mean, how many years? Um, it's been closed for several years because of, uh, there was a beam that broke. Um, and it was just very unsafe. So that was just shut off. Uh, we've been talking about trying to replace it and repair it. Uh, I'll spare you all the details. We're going around and around. Uh, to replace it, uh, minimal is going to be, you know, 30, to fifty thousand dollars, you know, some in that range, uh, just for a little pedestrian bridge. Um, it is needed because it's the other. There's another bridge that requires stairs, so it's not handicapped accessible. It's not good for you know, elderly walkers or that. Um, and then for uh, mountain bikers, you can't get across there. So they've been cutting across the brook. Uh, and again, I put some photographs in here where they've been going through, and there's this last storm we had with Hurricane Ida. It's all glass shards. I mean, it's, it's a real dangerous situation. So I think uh, I'm pretty positive uh, we can repair the bridge for about $20,000. Uh, it's about 80% positivity on our rate because it's just, again, location, trying to get people in there, trying to get materials in there. It's just very difficult. So between the flood control and the bridge, <coughs> an additional fifty thousand. Okay. Total request on here is ninety two eight eight hundred. There's good information provided. We have questions from Richard on this capital request. Charlie, Listen, I just want to say the narrative was a great, was a very good, Rich. It helped, it, uh, it had the pictures along with it. It helped me a lot because I don't access these areas that much. And that's why I So do the it. pictures and the narrative really helped me understand it. So thanks. Yes, thank you. Um, and that's why I put them in there because you say erosion and you know, it doesn't okay. really okay. mean anything. Okay, uh, other questions from the board or comments? RTM members or general public? 
questions or comments on this budget? Mr. Tuhill. <coughs> Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just speak, I'm speaking in support of these proposals that are, you know, because, I mean, this is true. That, um, there's been a terrible problem there upstream from the supply pond, right? There's been a, tons of erosion, and it's been going on for many, many years. And so, uh, you know, I mean, I think this is the time that we should really tackle it, you know. And, I mean, it's not that expensive either because this is, you know, this is a park that we own, and you know, I mean, you know, I mean, that's one of the expenses that we have with with our parks. You know, we, we have to take care of them. So, so, you know, uh, thank you for bringing this up. Sure. Thank, thank you for the comments. For thank you. Thank you. Uh, Joe, you got a question? Rich, could these this ninety two eight be done over a course of two years? I'm, I'm sorry, which one? Uh, the ninety two eight for the total for the capital. Yes. Uh, I mean, could that be? Parceled like half and half, 45 um, one year, 45 the second year, or something like that? Basically, what throws it off is the, the, the big deal is the, is the is pine gutter book, yeah. the erosion, and the bridge. Yeah, I see that, but I mean, could that be done one year and the rest another year? The bridge could be put off, it's out of commission now, but the longer it goes on, it's not going to be a repair job, it'll be a replacement, and okay. the costs go up. I hear it. Uh, right. Okay, uh, other questions, comments? Okay, I think we're all set, Richard. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Next is Break for Cable TV, page 28. Jamie, you're covering that? Total request of 15,100, no change. Uh, do we have comments or questions yeah, so from the right. No, I was just going to say that the subcontracting and the uh, having, you know, film to cover some of our uh, meetings and then the 8,000 donation expense. You may recall two years ago, we, uh, um, due to their loss of revenue, primarily due to poor cutting, people, uh, right. because a lot of the uh, revenue comes in through cable uh, subscriber bills. Uh, so as more people uh, transition away from cable and stream, uh, that uh, cuts right into the revenue that PCTV and uh, uh, public access networks receive. So uh, we we'll have a lot to share as well. Okay. Thanks, Jamie. Questions uh, from the first selectman on this budget? Of, uh, Request of 15,100 for cable TV. RTM questions or questions from the public? Okay, thanks, Jamie. We move on to Board of Finance, page 13. Mr. Finch. Okay, uh, well, the Board of Finance is. Uh, Items that uh, fall uh, under your area's budget, uh, the audit, which is uh, you guys appoint the auditors, and uh, and, the, and the work that's uh, done by our actuaries. Uh, those are the two main components of that. Uh, Lisa, of course, is your board clerk, and the uh, advertising, printing, and binding is uh, goes towards uh, the uh, annual report. It's a total request of $100,039, increase to $7,097, uh, increase in the actuarial expense of $5,000, audit of $2,000. Questions from the board on its own budget? Yes, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Excuse me. I, I think I know what you're going to ask. Go ahead. <laughs> Jeff, what am I going to ask? <laughs> I can't ask. <laughs> no? Right. You mean ahead. about the audit? Okay. The auditors? Shoot. Yeah, no, uh, I've had a couple of conversations with our finance director, <coughs> excuse me, in, in terms of uh, our audit review, um, and uh, he's looking into that, uh, looking at towns that may be comparable to us, but to say that, and also to be cautious, a number of things are happening. That industry is changing, 
uh, they're just getting fewer uh, auditing firms, fewer that do municipalities, um, and it, it's not a question of the price. It's always about price, but it's not about price. It's about the quality of the audit and their capability. So uh, Jim is looking into that for us, Mr. Chairman, and uh, as we move forward to make a decision on the auditors for the next year, we'll have further discussion on that. Okay, thank you. Um, other comments or questions with regards to this, this budget? Jim, did you, did you have anything to say on that? No. No, no, I'm fine. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, questions from RTM members or members of the public? Okay, thank you. We'll move on to uh, next budget is fiscal services, which is page 14. And uh, Jim, you want to handle that budget? Sure, the uh, fiscal services, that, that is uh, what's uh, commonly known as the finance department. Uh, the, again, uh, you know, there are unsettled <laughs> Uh, contracts uh, in the finance department is myself and four others. Three of those positions are uh, are in a bargaining unit, uh, and their contract expires uh, this June. So uh, that brings down the uh, overall percentage increase because those positions are are essentially uh, flat. Uh, and then, then the other there is a uh, uh, you can see the software uh, decreased. Uh, from the uh, current year, and that was a transfer we did to buy the debt book software, and the 5,000 is, is the annual fee. The 6,500 was uh, the extra 1,500 was for the setup fee, so we don't need to set up fee in the second year. Uh, the other items are essentially uh, kept flat. Uh, you, you may recall that uh, uh, that the tax uh, Bob, the tax collector, was talking about. Um, doing some more mailings and stuff, so uh, we may need to revisit our postage because uh, a lot of a lot of a lot of the mailing uh, does come out of the finance department. Okay, so the request is uh, four hundred ninety-four thousand nine hundred thirty dollars, increase to six thousand ninety-one. Uh, questions from the board on this? Questions. From RTM members or members of the public? No takers. All right, Jim, thank you. Next is public celebration, page 49. Okay, the largest uh, component of that budget, which is only going up for the uh, seasonal and part time, which um, 2% increase. You know, essentially, um, this funds the fireworks, uh, the town band, and uh, and the two parades. And the parades involve uh, fees for different groups that uh, that march in the parade. Uh, there's uh, the PA systems. There's uh, also, uh, I believe, a uh, gentleman who plays the trumpet. And there's the uh, so those are some of the things that come out of the uh, patriotic observance. A total request is 35297 Are there questions from the board on this? Jim, do you get any uh, corporate sponsorship on fireworks or contributions to the freight, or, or is it just our thing? Well, actually, there's, there's, two, there's two areas of the budget. There's uh, the fireworks committee does their fundraising, and, and this is just the town's contribution to that. Oh, okay. So what's the total cost, about 40, 50 grand to put that on? Jeff? No, by time, yeah. Just under 30. Oh, it's under 30, okay. So that, that does not include any overtime to the departments. Okay. Okay, other questions? <coughs> questions from RTM members, members of the public? Dennis? See that was in last year's budget. But what, what's seasonal part-time help for public celebration? Explain, explain to me what that is. Uh, the seasonal part-time help is really the uh, the band director. The band director? Yeah. It's 
Okay. Are there other questions with regards to this uh, budget request for public celebration, thirty-five thousand two ninety-seven? Okay. We we'll move on. Thanks, Jim. On that uh, sewer assessment fund, page sixty-four. Expenditures of fourteen thousand nine forty-nine with uh, offsetting revenue. Uh, yeah, and that's that's just a, uh, a self-balancing fund at this point. There, there haven't been any uh, major increase in the sewer assessments. The uh, principal and interest, all the sewer bonds, have been uh, paid off. Uh, at least the ones that are financed through the sewer assessment. So, um, you know, the fund balance and sewer assessment is. A little north of two million dollars, and uh, I believe in uh, the prior year we had appropriated some dollars out of that for some uh, projects. I think it was over at Riverside places. Yeah, and those moved into the uh, sewer ut utility fund. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah created a capital Essential. fund. Yeah. Questions on this from the board? Questions from RTM members on this sewer assessment fund? Expenditures 14,949. Okay, thank you. Next is pensions and contributions, page 56. Jim and Margaret. All right. So, All right, so the, uh, the town has a variety of uh, Costs in this area. The first one is a, uh, a volunteer stipend. Uh, you know, the chief uh, was here earlier. He presented the uh, the budget, which is mostly the career staff. We do have a, a stipend program, uh, which is designed to attract and recruit uh, volunteers. Uh, so we have uh, seventy thousand uh, for that, uh, and then we also have. Uh, Social Security, which I think is uh, is, pretty, is fairly self-explanatory. Municipal employees, that's the uh, Connecticut uh, CMERS program. You may recall from past presentations, uh, the state of Connecticut had lowered their return on assets assumptions to 6.9%. Uh, it used to be in the area of, of 8%. Uh, as a result of that, uh, the contributions are higher, and what, what the, the state is doing is they phase that in over a period of six years. So uh, we're going to continue to uh, to see those increases over the next, uh, over this, and I believe it, another three years. Uh, the police is, uh, is, for, is for the uh, police, obviously our uh, police employees, and uh, one of the things that's driving that is the, uh, we're, we're implementing the new uh, actuarial tables uh, in the valuation, and so uh, that actually uh, drove up some of the uh, costs. And uh, you may have noticed from the revised uh, agenda uh, for uh, uh, Monday, we're going to have our actuaries are going to make a presentation uh, on the police pension fund, uh, the OPEB trust fund, and the volunteer fire fund. So uh, they can also uh, go over some of the highlights there as well. Uh, retirement volunteer fire is for the volunteer fire fund and, and uh, uh, those were two of the funds that were presented by our investment consultants at your at your last meeting. And uh, the last item that has a budget is, is the unemployment compensation. So we're self-funded for unemployment? Y yes, basically we get billed by the state. And we up there. Yeah. And there's a decrease in the police pension fund. Yeah, and, 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 and the reason that is is because uh, you may recall last year when we were combining some of the uh, accounts for the police station, we took 75000 of that to do a, uh, a needs assessment of the building, which as Jamie referred to earlier, uh, and then the rest we sort of remained true to the function at least, and we actually put, put extra in, in the police fund, so we made an extra payment into the police fund. Okay. okay, questions on this budget? Six million six hundred six thousand seven hundred sixty-five dollars No questions? 
Questions from RTM members or members of the public? Okay. Uh, so we have next budget is uh, employee group insurance, page 57. And uh, the total request here is for $7,207,860. Increase of 794,000, broken up between the transfer out for OPEB of uh, 326,000 and health insurance premiums of 6,881. Jim, you were going to provide some detail. Yeah, and, and Margaret's here to support it as, as, okay. as, as well. And I, I think you, you know, there's sort of like two aspects of, of health insurance. There's the uh, there's the plan design elements and uh, you know, from the employee benefits, which is kind of the HR, and then there's uh, my piece, which is, uh, has a little bit of that, but it's primarily on the, uh, on the funding side. And uh, normally it's a, it's a relatively short presentation, and I, I will be sensitive to the time constraints. However, uh, in this year's budget, you know, there's a couple things I want the board to kind of understand and be aware of. Uh, because you may be asked to make decisions about uh, the health insurance. For example, I know in the Board of Ed's transmittal letter, they had talked about uh, an analysis that was done based on uh, what was budgeted or projected for claims and what the actual claims were. Uh, the long and short of that is they're asking the Board to consider uh, reducing uh, the amount of money that the Board would have to fund for claims. And you know the board is obviously a big, uh, big user of, uh, of medical benefit payments, uh, as is the town. I think if you look at the overall uh, spend in the medical benefit area, you know, it's projected to be anywhere between 17 and 18 million dollars uh, in aggregate. But I think it's important to kind of take a step back uh, in terms of sort of the history of this, uh, where we are today and uh, where we might be going as it kind of relates to the, the uh, self-funding and how it might relate to uh, the town and the board. So many, some of you may recall many years ago, uh, the town uh, started looking at self-funding. Victor, I know you were uh, probably in the 99, probably 2000, you know, so just a few years ago. And uh, we, we had looked at self-funding and one of the things that we were looking at was, well, what are we paying in premium, right? And what are we using in claims? And, and what, are, what are the benefits if we self-insure this risk? And so the long and short of it, we started going down that road. Uh, we held off for a year because we uh, knew that Anthem was in the process of doing a demutualization. Uh, as a result of that, we held on for a year. We got the $890,000 on the demutualization. And I believe at that time we stuck it in the pension funds. And then now we started going down the self-insurance fund road. And for a number of years, uh, self-insurance fund uh, was working well for us. Uh, we had more dollars going into the plan than we were paying out. Uh, we, we built up balances. We used some of those balances in the past to reduce future liabilities namely in the area of retiree health benefits. You see that continued uh, uh, benefits in terms of our OPEP contributions, and you saw uh, just a moment ago the OPEP contribution uh, is going down as a result of that, and, and I said the actuaries can talk more about it on Monday. And as the fund uh, continued to build up and, and our conversations with the Board of Ed uh, was, was, well, there was two things. One was, uh, how, if we weren't budgeting 100% of claims, how would we do that? And what we did um, in the last couple of years, and I, and I kind of give you a handout of a bunch of sheets of paper. So the first one is, uh, is indicative of, of some of the process we looked at. So in 21, for the 22 budget, uh, we reached out to the Board of Ed, and uh, we said we would like to allocate uh, claims dollars for budgeting purposes based on, on lives. And, the, and one of the reasons we wanted to do that 
was because if we were going to budget less than 100 percent of claims, we wanted that, that dividend to be distributed essentially uh, according to covered lines. We, we thought that was a, a fair way of doing that. Uh, so, so to do that, we asked the Board of Ed to increase their budget by $700,956. And, and so, and that's what we did. And then the second sheet is really just showing the approach we took, which is basically extracting out the non-claim costs and then dividing by the cover lives. And as you'll see on page two, the increase for the Board of Ed would be 70956. The increase for the town would be the same. They would offset. Uh, and that was the basis for the letter uh, that we sent to the schools and which we shared with the Board of Ed. You'll see on page three that uh, you know the Board of Ed graciously acquiesced and in their transmittal letter to the town of Brantford, uh, they, they had basically um, identified that the request coming to the Board of Finance uh, was increased by 700956 for medical benefits. And if you look on page four, if you see the board of uh, request that year, you'll see a line uh, that's circled uh, towards the middle of the page of that 700,956. And then you'll see there was 656,108 the prior year. So that demonstrated that, that we had done this process for, for a couple of years. And you'll notice that, that the request for the total benefits was 10,561,693. When the Board of Finance last year adopted the recommended budget to the RTM, uh, they budgeted, again, less than 100 percent of claims. The town budgeted 97 percent of claims, and that got distributed to the town and the board based on the covered lives. So you'll see here uh, the board uh, got a benefit of 281,563 and the town 156,754. So basically, that was, we basically used that budgeting in 97% of claims to reduce the Board of Education's budget that year. So if you look on page six, you'll, you'll recognize this as your cut sheet. Uh, you'll see that it's a reduction of almost the exact same amount. I'm, I'm guessing there might have been a percentage play here of 282.153. And the explanation for that reduction was that Board of Finance was funding 97% of claims. So when we, so in the Board of Ed's request for next year, uh, it doesn't have, we didn't ask them to fund a piece of the town's insurance. We didn't, we did, decided not to allocate uh, this on, on lives. So we just said, okay, budget it straight up. Uh, so in essence, uh, that 481,553, which would have, which was in the base, is no longer, you know, is still in the base, but no longer benefiting the town. So when you look at the town's number going up, uh, you really have to, to look at it in the context of the fact that, you know, we're making up all the money that we would basically give to the board to fund a piece of our claims. Page eight kind of shows the difference between uh, the Board of Ed's request last year and the final uh, for this year. So the request for the year we're in and the final, and you can see that there was a benefit of the 418.553. Uh, so when you look at the town's increase, you sort of have to add that back to the base. You know, when you look at it year over year, it's still a big increase. So it's still a 15% increase but it's not really a 24% increase, which is on page 57. So the next question you may ask is, well, why did the town not do this the same way they've done it in other years? And this board may recall that uh, a couple years back, we had mentioned that we were looking at other insurance alternatives. And we had indicated that there was elements of the market uh, or, or the um, insurance market for municipalities was changing. Uh, a couple things were changing. One, 
is that we were not effectively rated with the Board of Ed. We allocated it for budget purposes, but we weren't blended. Our employees weren't paying a, an allocated rate based on a blended claims basis. Um, we had other groups that were looking at uh, leaving uh, the self-insurance, and some actually did, uh, East Shore Health uh, and Blackstone Library. And at the time, the uh, one, uh, a couple other bargaining units were looking at other alternatives uh, for medical benefits. So, so we were basically uh, being subject to a shrinking pool, and we were self-insuring it. So the so the law of large numbers was working against us. We had also, at the time, we were looking at uh, the state partnership program, which uh, has grown dramatically since even those conversations. And so when we evaluate uh, our insurance alternatives on an annual basis, one of the things we look at is, well, how does our self-insurance on the town side compare to the state partnership plan? And in many cases, uh, it was uh, to our advantage uh, had we been in the state partnership plan. Uh, and if you kind of think about it, it's a, it's a bigger pool. Uh, it's a very competitive plan. Uh, in some communities, the, uh, the unions, from what I've been told, actually have, have asked for the partnership plan. So uh, it's, and it was, my understanding is when it was created, it, was, it, it had the backing of, of the ASME unions. So it's not like a, uh, a plan that comes out of nowhere, and it's not a plan that's not uh, generous in terms of its benefit. It may not perfectly match what the town has, but it's, it's still a very, very good plan. Uh, and some calculations would, would be a, uh, a better plan, but better I know is, is uh, subject to the individuals and, you know it's uh, maybe better for most but not all but if you're in, in that uh, not all it's it's a worse plan and uh, so I, I am uh, sensitive to that so I, so so now the town is seeing its pool shrink it could continue to shrink more the town is doing all of the, the work that's associated uh, with a plan that's actually more expensive based on the analysis that we've done. So, for example, you know, if you look at how the self-insurance fund works, the town is basically assessing the property, the town's collecting the taxes, the town's keeping the general ledger, the, the town's tracking the investments, the town's paying the claims. It's true that the town gives money to the Board of Ed and they write us a check. So, not totally one-sided, but the town is is doing um, a lot of the heavy lifting with this. And coincidentally, it's not really getting the benefits of it because we're a smaller pool. We're not blended with the, uh, with the school system. So, uh, and, and as, um, as we mentioned uh, on some of the presentations of some of the other contracts, is that uh, you know, it's our aspiration uh, to continue to look uh, and, and move to that plan. And, uh, and we believe, still believe, that in doing so, uh, it has an overall savings for the taxpayer, albeit most of it is on the town side. But it's important to understand if, if we did transition out of the self-insurance fund uh, business, then that has some implications uh, for the town, uh, Board of Finance, and uh, the Board of Education. Uh, the first would be, well, well, what do you do with the money that's in the fund? Uh, and uh, I seem to be the only one that was uh, working, I'm not talking about board members, was on payroll, I should say, when uh, that was set up. And at that time, the discussion was that uh, the money would go back to the town and then the town would decide how to use it. Uh, and then the other is uh, the Board of Ed, because if the town was, was, not, was out of the self-insurance fund business, I think it's fair to say it, I believe uh, First Selectman and, and Margaret agree with me, is, well, we don't have an insurable interest in funding contractual benefits for employees that don't 
work for us. Uh, that's the Board of Ed's responsibility. And so, uh, you know, the Board of Ed would then, that we obviously have to give them time to consider that, but then the Board of Ed would have to look to uh, make alternative arrangements uh, to provide the benefits that they as a counterparty to their employees would, would have to provide. And so that's something uh, to think about as well. And so when we uh, talk more, uh, and you guys talk among yourselves, about uh, how you may want to approach funding medical claims, I wanted to at least uh, advise the board as to why it's a little bit different this year. Uh, it's different because, one, uh, again, we're not looking to allocate claims based on lies. So that means our base is, is a little bit different than, than what it really is because of the 481,000. So our base is, is off. The Board of Ed's base is obviously off because their budget that they're presenting to you in, includes the 481 that, that we gave them for our claims, which aren't in there again. So uh, there's that piece. Uh, in, 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 and they've um, asked you to consider uh, reducing the amount of uh, percent of claims to which uh, you would fund their budget. And I don't think they're going to find any resistance from the board because you've been doing it for the last two years anyway. So uh, there, there's that piece of it. And, uh, and then as an obligation to uh, you know, our taxpayers in terms of, well, is there a way to get the savings uh, without uh, while we continue to uh, uh, work on a transition plan. And so I think that's something that we can uh, we could ponder and, and, and try to come up with uh, uh, a solution or, or an alternative solution uh, uh, that's in line with our aspirations. Uh, probably uh, you know, before you make your uh, current recommendations. So uh, I want to thank the chairman. I did, I did warn him before the meeting that I was probably going to be a little long-winded on this one, but I thought there was a lot to cover and, and uh, that uh, I wanted to try to sort of give everyone sort of an understanding as, as kind of how, how, oh, I think we all see it, uh, prior to you making your, uh, your budget decision. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. As usual, the, the um, historical references, but also the detailed, the thorough analysis, uh, much appreciated. Um, and so uh, um, I know it was quite a bit to absorb, but we do have this reference material here. We'll have further discussions. Uh, for tonight, are there any questions from Jim um, on, with, with regards to this topic? I think he definitely is, is helpful in refreshing some of the actions that we've taken. You know, Victor and I were working with Jim years ago when it got set up, and, um, you know, Jim has been uh, on top of this from day one, so much appreciated. And actually, Victor, I think, was one of the ones that, that on the board was one who pushed for it for, for years, with, uh, and the town has had substantial savings because of it. So, credit work credit still for sure. Jim. Uh, Victor, yes, sir. Yeah. What's the claim, claim increase experience last year in that state plan, for instance? Well, I, I can't tell you off the top of my head what their, uh, their, their, their uh, experience was. Uh, you, you may recall that it, from what I've been told from our, uh, our, our reps, and Mark, correct me if it's consistent with your memory, is that uh, initially when that plan was developed, uh, some of the early entrants were basically, you know, trading dollars against the plan. So uh, you had a lot of uh, Fairfield County communities, which had rich benefits, expensive benefits um, in expensive areas of the state, so, so costs were high. And so they uh, had actually uh, had lost money in some of the early years. Uh, from what I understand, they stabilized those losses. Uh, so, and, and that's what... Uh, our folks have told us in terms of, of the actual numbers. Now, you do lose some control over this, too. Once, once you kind of go into that, uh, you, you can't go to them and budget a, a fraction of claims. Uh, it does make other aspects easier in terms of negotiations because 
they're not negotiating plan design changes. You know, it, it, it is there. So uh, there's that. So, there's some of those benefits, and sort of in the other considerations category, I, I guess I would put it, is that the state of Connecticut and in particular, uh, you know, the state controllers, so you have constitutional officers that have, that are, have really uh, gone into this uh, quite, quite strongly. And, you know, it, it makes you wonder, uh, under the present political environment, would the state's going to keep this, this, this fund running. Um, now, again, that's, you, you know, when you start getting away from claims and numbers and what the state might do and, and, and what one's political philosophy is, I know you get into the, sort of the, the fuzzier areas of this, but, uh, but I think that's also uh, a consideration. And, and, there, and, there are, and there are certainly uh, some trade-offs to this, but it's, it, it is something we've looked at over the years. Um, and I, and I don't think uh, in, in the current uh, year it benefits the Board of Ed uh, in terms of, uh, you know, them staying with us versus uh, this plan. I believe that uh, what the Board of Ed currently has uh, is a slight advantage to them. Overall, if you look at it as combined, it's still, it's still a savings. Uh, but, there, but there have been years where uh, the Board of Ed would actually have gotten the savings. And, uh, and again, so there have been some years where the savings would have been substantial. So, you know, now I think the, the other side of that, to be fair, is that, well, you sort of got the savings anyway. So you got the savings because, you know, you, you, you paid less in claims. You, you know, so you, so you kind of got the savings that way. And again, that, that's part of the uh, self-insurance uh, game is that you're supposed to uh, be rewarded for taking on risk. And what kind of turns this on its head, I think, is that we could, on a year-to-year -year basis, transfer the risk and save money. So, so, so that would seem like a compelling case uh, to make the move. So, um, and you know, they have the advantage of the law of large numbers. Uh, they, as my understanding, don't buy stop loss. You know, so the town buys. Um, when, you're, when you have a large self-insured retention, you buy individual stop loss. You know, uh, someone has very bad medical experience, and then you buy an aggregate stop loss. Um, so if the aggregate stop loss would kick in if, if claims exceeded expectations by uh, by more than 20 percent. Now, that's a fairly significant corridor between X and X plus 20, or X times 20 percent. So uh, that aspect. Uh, is, uh, is, is very inexpensive. But, you know, that pool is so large that they're not actually uh, buying that. So that's one, one piece of it that they actually uh, save on. And, you know, the, and the stop loss is generally not known. So when projections are given, uh, our brokers and working with Margaret and Jane, myself and Don and, and Hamlet try to work on them to get that number down. Uh, and that number also contributes to uh, paying, uh, you know, less than the full amount of claims. And again, I, I, I think it was I certainly uh, I thought it was helpful uh, the analysis that that was provided. I mean, we knew it intuitively because the fund was growing. Uh, I, what I also think is important to note in that is that both Lockton and Anthem projected numbers that were higher than what we actually paid. So. Uh, you know, and those are people that do this for a living, you know, so it's like, well, what would we predict? You know, so that's why we use, we always use their numbers as a base and kind of work down from it, so. Okay, more to come on that. Thank you. Other, other questions? Um, questions from? Can I just make a comment? Sure. No, no, um, in a very practical comment. We're not ready to make a recommendation tonight. That's what's clear. In fact, we have budgeted for no change, other right. than staying, staying with HSA and the PPO plan. Um, however, important piece is we've been educating our employees for the last two years on the partnership plan as an option that we are considering. 
So we have built this discussion point into our discussions with our unions, and we are at a critical point, I think, in the next two months uh, to bring more information back to you that would either indicate that we're going to move forward aggressively in this or not. Okay. Is that a fair summary? Yeah. Of, uh, yeah, and the, uh, the, the public works are now with Teamsters? No. They're not. They're, they're with the Teamsters Union, but... but they're with. They're still in our they're plan. They're still in the plan. Correct. Okay. They yeah, and, not, and, and they as I said, purposely did not move them. Okay. Yeah, and thank you, Mark. And, I, and as and as I said, I think that this sort of emphasizes the uh, uh, the dichotomy, the, 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 the different roles. Is that you know basically what Mark is saying is you know it's not July first. It's not like everybody's in the in this plan. Uh, and you know the two tracks can kind of run uh, on different uh, schedules. Uh, so there's what what do we fund for medical claims, and then there's where right. where are the employees, yeah, and so you know you could have a divergence, and then and then with the with the aspirational goal of getting them there and back together at some point. In time. Right. So. Okay, so we'll we'll you keep us posted, and for now we're dealing with the budget we have in front of us. Correct. Okay. Um, any other comments on this budget? I know we have the next two. We're good there. Um, Questions for the RTM members on this particular budget or members of the public? If not, uh, we'll move on to the municipal insurance on page 58. And we're looking for a total request here, 2,366,858. Uh, again, Jim and Margaret. Yeah, actually, uh, w one of these lines in, is, uh, you know, uh, as you know, some of the times when we make budget adjustments, some we adjust uh, down, some, some we, we uh, uh, will probably need to adjust up. Uh, and this is one area where uh, the property and auto insurance, I think we have to adjust that up from what was uh, originally projected. Uh, workers' comp and the heart and hypertension funds are both uh, are both good, um, and again, we actually, for a number of years, have uh, done valuations on our on our workers' comp program. So, uh, and again, it's a similar type uh, arrangement on on the workers' comp, insofar as that we have a uh, a large uh, self-insured retention. I believe the excess is 750, right, Margaret, on that, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, uh, so we're, we have up to that number. Uh, you know, there's components of that program. You have your actual claims, then you have your uh, excess insurance, uh, which is roughly, uh, uh, you know, in the area 170, 200,000. Uh, then you have the agent. Uh, then you have the, uh, the third-party administrator. You know, Charlie's familiar with that company, uh, and, uh, and then you have payments to the second injury fund. In terms of the heart and hypertension, uh, there really is no insurance for that. Um, and again, we've, uh, you know, you're, it's a limited in terms of who uh, can make claims under that uh, based on when they were hired. Although I will say there is always a, uh, a legislative risk. You know, there are active lobbies that have tried to expand heart and hypertension uh, benefits. And uh, the other thing that's, uh, you know, in terms of procedurally, um, Margaret and my, myself are both very active uh, working with our third party administrator, our, uh, and, and, the, and the attorneys to try to make uh, settlements uh, which we believe are favorable to us and favorable to the, uh, the claimant. You know, usually it's trading cash for the claim and the, uh, the certainty of, uh, of the settlement uh, gives us comfort and obviously the cash gives them comfort. So uh, generally those are considered win-win situations and, uh, and those uh, settlements get approved uh, by the Board of Select. Okay. okay questions uh, on this budget? Questions from the RTM members or members of the public? OK. 
Okay, thanks. We'll move on to Labor Relations, page 20. This will be quick. Um, there's no change requested. No change on that budget? That's Correct. A, thanks, Margaret. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so it's a total request of 62500 No, no, uh, No additional dollars requested. And you have how many unions, uh, settlements you're anticipating? Six. Six going forward? Yes, I'm actively in three of them now. Okay. Three active and three to start. Okay. Questions on this budget? Which pays for the labor attorney, basically. Uh, no questions from the board, questions from RTM members, general public. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, next is Human Resources, page 30. Okay, so in, in our wage and salary line item, we have uh, two non-union employees, myself and assistant director, and then we have one union employee. So this accounts for the um, non-union and the fact we don't have um, an agreement yet on a contract for the non-union employee. Uh, so that's why the 1.8%. Um, the major change here you'll see in line item two is overtime. We don't generally have overtime at all in our department. Um, one, because we try and not use it. Having said that, um, I do have an employee. We only have three employees total in the department, and one of them will be out for a 12-week period of time. She's our payroll coordinator, and um, therefore I'm going to ask my assistant to take on some additional responsibilities of doing payroll since she's experienced in that. I think it would be the most cost effective way instead of hiring a part time person, a seasonal person, or any other person to take that employee's place. And that's why the overtime is requested of this year. I see this as a one time uh, opportunity to utilize staff correctly. Um, the other big or large item is the our HRS services item. You'll notice that that's pretty flat. Um, as you know, for the last three years, we've had um, our ADP contracts for workforce as well as our payroll have been flat because we have had no increase. I do expect an increase probably in February of next year with a new contract. Of course, we'll try and get a zero increase again, but after three years, I would think there'd be at least a 4% increase in some manner or format. So I've budgeted for that to include the total increase. Okay, total request of 339968 Board has questions? Okay, questions from RTM members, members of the public? Okay, I think you're all set, Margaret. Thank Great, you. thank you so Thanks much. for the presentation. And so, that wraps up our portion of the public hearing process for tonight. I'll uh, entertain a motion to recess until Monday evening, the 21st of March. Second. Moved and seconded by Harry. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at BranfordTV.org.